my current plans are I am playing a Lightning Trap just to test it out as a possible league starter for next league. Uh, it's gone pretty well so far, so much so that I finished Act 7 without even realising that I hadn't ascended. Uh, so I'm probably going to need to fix that now. And then I can probably do both the first and the second lab at this point, after which we will then press onwards. So level 55 at the moment, and I've got a planned outline for where we want to go with this character. Okay, so uh, we are now good to go. We will go and punch our way through uh, lab one and lab two, I guess, at this point. Uh, like I said, I would normally do lab one much earlier than this, but I didn't notice that I'd forgotten it. Uh, and you do need to do lab one in order to get access to lab two. I do think GGD should change it so that you can do the labyrinths. Uh, you can start with whichever labyrinth you want and that doing one labyrinth completes all the lower ones. But I haven't done that. That's just my suggestion. That's not um, not something that's actually being done. Um, yeah, FS, so look, there's leadership's price, sort of. Uh, a perfectly rolled leadership's price is plus three to all, but it's much more common to get plus three to one and to get, like, you know, to get a bad roll on the other ones. And yeah, if you got if you got plus three to uh, if you got plus three to um, fire on a leadership's price that was otherwise rubbish, so let's say plus three fire minus one cold minus two lightning, uh, that with rise of the phoenix and the new jewel is really good. Oh, could you not do that? Traps, traps are really annoying when you're doing lab over level. Hey, metric, how's it going? But yeah, I really do like that new jewel. I think it's going to be a bit of fun to try and figure out. It's a bit of a puzzle, really. i uh, got to remember that this is low-level content, so there's no point doing stuff here. This is something that I just forgot to do. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Um, I'm good, Metric. Just uh, doing Labyrinth, which I somehow managed to forget to do when I was at level... Ah, uh, this is lab one, I mean. Waiting for Azara to actually remember that he's dead. It can be quite frustrating sometimes how long it takes for him to die. Yeah, I do think Chieftain, uh, just by virtue of the fact that Chieftain gets 100 points of resistance... From a node that pretty much everyone in takes on a Chieftain as well. It's not like it's a flex node. It's one of the core things that makes the Ascendancy so good. Uh, is, uh, I think it's Tamawoa, the, the one that grants you the fire resistance and damage taken as fire and all that other good stuff. Uh, this is just a reward room here, I think. It's one of the things very easy to underestimate uh, Lab 1 when you massively out... When, well, Lab in general, when you massively outgear it. Oh, that was just a Labyrinth Trove that I wound up doing. I don't know why I wound up in there. Anyways, it's done now. I could have gone this way instead. Yeah, Detonate Dead is definitely, like, at least the Ignite side of Detonate Dead is definitely going to wind up nerfed. There's no, uh, I don't think that's, uh, really up for discussion at the moment. That's gonna happen. Uh, it's a question whether it's playable or not afterwards. We'll find out. Um, Firestorm needs a lot more than just a little buff. Hey, FS, that's good. Um, so that's what, about the 70% mark through by XP, right? Hey, I've got a scammer calling me. Let's mess with him. Hello? Ah, 
Damn it, it's the Robo Spammer. I got someone call me um, the other day and I just acted like I, they'd call a radio radio station that was uh, offering a $15,000 prize if they knew the answer to a simple question. Uh, it's always fun. I, I like messing with scammers. There's a couple of people on YouTube that do it in a serious way, like, um, you know, putting their considerable technical skills to use with, uh, you know, hacking them and stuff like that. Uh, I don't have the talents to do that, but it is still fun to just mess with them. Um, what's the deal here? Ah, oh, it's through here. Switch is... So if it's called a switch, you don't need to push it. If it's called a lever, you do. And if it's a uh, timed crank, you probably need to as well. Uh, although that one was actually not needed. That was just to open a shortcut. I think it's really tough to figure out a law that would that would work because... The thing with the scammers is that, like, they're mostly operating from places where Australian law can't really reach, uh, and they're using internet numbers. Now, you could make it so that internet-originating phone calls don't connect or that you can opt out of receiving them. Uh, that would then end up having a bunch of other effects down the, down the track. I don't think it's, a, it's an easy problem to solve, to be honest. Well, it's not just India, though. Like, India is the higher profile country that it's done from, but India tries to... Like, India has... India's cops are really quite... Um, quite good at getting these places shut down. Uh, it's just that there's so many of them because it's there's so much money in, in the scams. There's a couple of things they could do that would make it um, more difficult, but they'd have flow-on effects, like... If they made it so that banking transactions were slower, that would be something that would that would fix the issue. Uh, like that would just crush the scammers outright, uh, except maybe for the ones that use Bitcoin. But then, like that's something that is like has a lot of flow on effects in the rest of the economy. So it's like it's really tough to figure out what you would do to to neutralize the scams. I do think they should make it so that. Um, if you, like for, for telemarketer ones, if someone calls you on, your, on the do not call register, oh shit, I got someone at the door. Uh, one sec. Sorry about that. Uh, I just said. Just need a moment to imagine. Yeah, I do agree with Metric's point there a lot. It's like it's um, like that you where where there's better jobs available, people tend to avoid working in these, or most people tend to avoid working in these sorts of really scammy industries, um, and. Why am I? Oh, this is a, they had a really tough trap gauntlet for normal lab. Like really over the top. Oh God. Oh, that was, um, that was rough. They killed off the golem. Uh, and then like golems are really strong at carrying you through, uh, all the damage in, in like, ah, oh, it was just one of these. There. Yeah, yeah, you see a lot of it in, uh, but also I think that um, they should make it so that any debts that are related to products that you purchase from an illegal telemarketing call should be unenforceable. Like that would just end a lot of the, um, like that would just end all of the not quite an outright scam type places uh, that do all of the, like they do all of the um, cold calling and disregard the do not call register. The one that was really interesting, one of the anti-scam YouTubers, 
did a bit of a discussion on how they work. And it was like, I had always thought that they worked quite differently to how they do. Um, one of the most common ones will make it look like they have refunded you a payment, uh, but then they will refund you a hundred times, except they actually haven't refunded it. And then they'll start acting like, um, oh God, I'm going to lose my job over this. This is a disaster. Help, help, help. Um, and that's the way, that's their sort of in, which is something that's quite different to what I was, um, to what I was expecting. Hey, that's actually, oh no, it's to attacks. Yeah. Oh, I don't need that. And what are we going to do for first lab? I'll, I'll just take the defensive ones first because I got all the damage I need. Yeah, the thing is that a lot of the smart ass comments, um, like, it depends. There's people that are, that, like, there's two different types of people that do those scams. There's the people that are, like, Desperate, and then there's the people that are like upper middle class in and looking to make a lot more money. Yeah, keen to see on that uh, metric end because that's a backup plan. Here is explosive trap with flamethrower, of course, as the anti bossing skill of choice. I should actually check what the uh, layout is for cruel lab. So, this is lab two now. Uh, so, there's one path that looks like it's direct to the aspirin trial. Yeah, I'm pretty content with lightning traps so far. Um, I forgot to ascend, which is always a really good sign. It means that you're much stronger than you expect to be. And so, you know, like I just was, I realized, oh, I am in act eight and I haven't yet done my first labyrinth because I never felt weak. So I'm pretty happy with that as a, uh, as just like a power metric or power indicator. Let's see how... Here's, here's a better test. So it's not dominating on Cruel Lab, but it's getting the job done. This is a three-link uh, lightning spire and a four-link lightning trap currently. And I'm still using a... Uh, I'm still using a min-level 20 wand. I think. Oh, no, I upgraded past that, but not by much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like you don't need a... You don't feel like you don't need an ascendancy, which is always a really good sign. Because I'm really not sure how hard Seismic Trap's going to get nerfed. I think they should gut it, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me if GGD do the, do the sort of... Yeah, we're just going to... We're just going to pretend to nerf it and leave it in a spot where it's still the best build in the game. Um, but if they don't do that, like if, if they got it properly, then Lightning Trap's a very realistic starter candidate. Um, okay, Dark Shrine. Ice Trap was doing really well at the start of Expedition. Um, it just, it didn't have much in the way of heavy bossing. Uh, but it seemed like it was going really well. Like Tripolar Bear was doing a lot of it on stream. And it looks solid when I looked at his. The thing is that uh, Ice Trap definitely doesn't have access to some of the highest end scaling for single target. Like that is definitely where Lightning Strike, oh sorry, Lightning, um, Lightning Spire Trap comes in. All right, we're not going to take that. We're going to look for the other exit from this zone. Oh, were you playing it as a uh, as a saboteur, or were you playing it as a dead eye, or were you playing it as something hipster? Not dead eye, raider. I mean, raider was the other option that people played. Hey, two of all, thanks for the follow. The thing was that people did well with it. It's not like it was. It's not like it was a bad build. It got the job done. 
Like Tripola got um, Tripola got a long way through the game with it. I mean, he, he got um, I think he got all content down with it. Ah, oh, stupid positions on these traps. Uh, jump to there. Oh, yikes. Trap callers are nasty today. Like both normal and um, normal and cruel labs are brutal. I'm just gonna wait and get my. Um, I don't think I have the Rizlatha Pantheon at the moment, so I'm not gonna be able to get full things. Um, hey, guess what? It's time for a spammer to get banned. It's always fun to do this. Um, okay, you can get a ban hammer. I can't be bothered actually uh, reporting them for the moment. All right. Now at this point, let's see if we can get the locked door open. This is just going to be a, yeah. This is just a stupid chest as well. All that for um, huh, for that rubbish. Okay. Oh well. And I can't get out this way either. I have to hit the other lever to get out. Okay, we're just going to wait here for a sec. No, that's a good idea. Oh, oh, that was, um, that was actually like a really trippy, a tricky, um, trap gauntlet. I need my, um, golem back. Golem will solve all of the life problems now. And that's a dead end. Great. Okay, so that was entirely a waste of time. Oh, well. This is what I get for not looking up the labyrinth layout before starting it. Uh, usually I have a bit more of a sense as to what direction to go if you look it up. Oh, okay, yeah. One more room. Yeah, yeah. Vitality's be fine. But I'll, I'll use the golem for now. You can get a sense from the, um, like from my, uh, the amount that my mana is going down that I don't have the ability to reserve all that much more. I could take, um, like I could level up clarity and then just rely more on mana regen. That'd be an option, but actually you're not seeing my mana, are you? Because of my face being in the way. Oh, well, uh, I am, I am quite low on mana generally. Like, I'm only reserving 30% of my mana, but I'm regularly hitting my mana flask because I'm actually out of mana. Uh, augments were um, staggeringly rare, even in 313. They practically didn't exist then either. I think I had two in the entirety of 313. You got them if you were um, if you were target farming harvest aggressively, but uh, they were still like you had to really do things that were um, that were over the top to get them. Yeah, exactly. You had to set up your atlas and you had to run um, by you know run a move speed based character to get that many. Yeah, there you have it. That's um, that's what it was. What it was required. Well, that's a move speed based character too. Like that, that's got to be considered a move speed based character.
Uh, traps being disarmed in the uh, final Azaro fight is nice. I always like that. Just makes it so much uh, smoother to do that encounter. Yeah, augments are a bit more common at lower tier. If um, like I can't remember how high Preach got, but uh, you would have seen more of them if you were going, like if you were use if you were getting low tier ones. All right, is this useful here? Yes, it's perfect. This is the one that has the exit. The thing is that augment crafts aren't very powerful unless you know a lot about the game. Like, unless you ex are an extremely min-maxed crafter, and really unless you've got access to trading with other players extensively. And given that Preach was playing uh, pseudo, was playing SSF, uh, you're not going to get much use out of them. <laughs> yeah, Preach, if Preach got a mirror, he would recognise it as the ridiculously, uh, ridiculously valuable item it was. Uh, just because he has a sense of of like game design, this would have to be extraordinarily rare. This is not a balanced item, therefore it must be extremely rare so as not to uh, break things in part and apart in the game. Speaking of meltdowns, did people see the big gaming news today of uh, Microsoft buying Blizzard? That's going to be uh, interesting. It's really funny as someone that's like, you know, nearly 40 to look back and see how like Microsoft were regarded as the most hated tech company for a long time. And Blizzard were regarded as like, oh yeah, they're sort of one of the rare ones that aren't totally horrible. And then the perceptions just totally changed over time. Like they've basically swapped. Uh, let's just pick up the wand. It's not likely to be an upgrade, but it might be. Pick up the sh the gloves, a boot. I mean, they could be an upgrade too. Not likely. Yeah, yeah. Getting rid of Kotick will be a huge improvement. Um, okay, so do we want to go Perfect Crime or Pyromaniac? Um, like, Pyromaniac is a lot of, like, solves a lot of my life recovery issues, but the thing is, at the moment, I'm fine with a life flask, too. I wouldn't mind just working towards Chain Reaction now, to be honest. We'll take Perfect, uh, we'll take, um, Perfect Crime. It's a huge damage increaser. And then 50% increased cooldown recovery on throwing traps is great. Uh, this is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Kotick is definitely gone. All right, so that is um, that is Act Eight. Uh, well, that is Labyrinth Two done. Uh, let's go do Act Eight. This is the first zone that has a lot of chaos damage in it uh, in the game. So this is somewhere that I often die in softcore. Uh, if you're playing in hardcore, you really need to fear this zone. Uh, people are always aware of Doedre, but Doedre is a mechanical fight you can easily learn. Uh, this has just a lot of chaos damage around that will get you if you're not expecting it. One thing I'm curious about, though, like, okay, um, let's say they keep World of Warcraft... Uh, let's say they decide to put World of Warcraft in the game pass. That's going to probably end the WoW token at that point, I think. 
um, which is going to be a really interesting change. Like, it's going to be one of the biggest pay-to-cheat elements of World of Warcraft gone. I'm kind of curious whether that actually goes down that way or whether there's some other plan in place. Um, I'm going to skip that. They're not worth doing, usually. Yeah, well, Candy Crush and Microsoft have had this relationship for ages. Like, I remember my at uh, my old work, every every significant Windows update, I would have to go and uninstall Candy Crush from all the PCs. Uh, like that was crazy. It was uh, you know because I it was a small company and I was the person that wore the IT hat, even though I'm not an IT person. Um, so yeah, I'd have to do that. I was like, that was just crazy. Like that it would keep reinstalling itself on bloody business machines too. Yeah, it could, it could be that it requires the sub still. Uh, they may decide to do a bundle. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do a bundle that makes the game pass really cheap if you are, if you own WoW. Uh, and it may be that they decide to just go, all right, we're going to make WoW this huge draw card for the Game Pass. Yeah, Street Shine raised an interesting point about whether this will change D4. I'd, I don't know. Like, I, it's partly because I've never owned a Microsoft console. Um, I don't know what they actually tend to do in terms of how they design games really Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where everything goes with it. <laughs> Torvalds has got a real uh, nightmare scenario there. <laughs> I think you could definitely uh, come up with some um, extreme... Oh my god, this is a terrible, terrible way things could go. Sitch generations like that. <laughs> oh god internet explorer we remember that hey that's um that's an old name now i mean does anyone that's does anyone over 30 uh call microsoft edge by any name other than internet explorer because, like, I, I know that they discontinued the name because Internet Explorer got such a bad name over time. But, like, it seems to me that everyone my age, even younger than me, like, everyone in their 30s uh, seems to just, if they want to talk about uh, Microsoft Edge for any weird reason, because you don't usually talk about it. It's not, like, this common topic. Uh, but if you do decide to discuss it, uh, you would normally think of it as, um, you call it Internet Explorer. I don't need a Vile RF, I think. Just for these sorts of fights. Yeah, that app we use to install another browser. <laughs> yep. And it keeps, uh, it keeps reinstalling itself every major Windows update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely with all of you on this. It's like... 
Not the most useful um, program out there. Uh, tier 3 resist craft is really useful there. As like one of the one of those power milestones you don't realize is a power milestone uh, when uh, when you're playing the game through, but then it's like it just solves so many problems for you. Uh, now we were in the middle of picking up some trap cluster somewhere. Uh, it's here, isn't it? Five percent trap speed, and then we've got a uh, master sapper, which is pretty nice. The frenzy charge node. Yeah. See, the thing is, I don't know if edge has gotten better. Like, I just have lost all confidence in it. And so I'm not willing to give it another try. It might be that it's now the best browser. Uh, but if it is, I'll never know because I, I don't trust enough to try it. Uh, here we are. Here's where we need to go, I think. This is for the, uh... Ank... No, it's not! I thought this was where the Ank was. This is it, then. It's usually through one of these, off to the side. One of these archways. Hey, Skizzus, thanks for the follow. Alright, uh, let's pop up this. So let's just have a quick inventory of the gear while we're here, because I think I'm still using all of the same gear I was using in um, Act 5. Uh, this Fawn's Horn was pretty good, but I was using it in Act 5. Fox Shade I picked up in Act 5. Uh, this is uh, just... Yeah, this is actually pretty good. Double resist in life. Uh, this here is absolute trash and from Act 1 and should probably go. Uh, unique from Act 5. A very low-level item that's uh, pretty okay, but was good in Act 2. And this is like another Act 5 item. Uh, Act 1, rubbish. Act 3. And Act 4, rubbish. So I'm pretty content with how this is going at the moment. Like, there's no... There's nothing pushing me to even consider chasing gear at this point. Which is always a good sign. So I think I'm, I'm confident to say that from a levelling perspective, this is a very smooth setup. I'll have to see when we get to the harder bosses, uh, Depraved Trinity and Katava, uh, just to see how it feels there. But I'm not feeling any urge to uh, actually do anything with the currency I'm looting. So Lex is saying that if Edge was good, I'd have heard about it. I'm not sure I would have, because, like, who would have tried it? <laughs> like... Maybe some um, tech reviewer that was paid to do a review would have been like, oh, okay, let's try this out. Let's try Microsoft Edge. Oh, this actually is better than I thought it would be. But I probably wouldn't have seen that, so... Oh, yeah, each plan. I recover life when your trap is triggered is amazing. Uh, I am using that, and it is fantastic. Uh, really, really good. So, H Plan's talking about a mastery. Uh, you recover 30 life instantly when one of your traps is de is detonated. Uh, it is fantastic, that mastery. Uh, it can probably get replaced by Pyromaniac in Saboteur at some point, because, uh, granted, you're going to want Pyromaniac for its other benefits, so it's not like there's any opportunity cost to, uh, to getting the 2% regen from that. But for the moment, yeah, it's fantastic. So Tolman, Tolman can kill you. Uh, Tolman looks like a really easy fight. It's surprisingly not. Uh, the thing that will kill you is the black and red automaton themed circles on the ground. Uh, they're really easy to dodge when you're aware they're there. They're also just hard to see. So that's the thing with this fight. 
Uh, expect to die a lot in it if you just stand in one place. Especially given it's never really clear when the Tolman phase of it starts. Here he is. So you see there's these circles on the ground. Uh, those are really devastating damage. You do not want to be staying in those at all. And there's those black and red things that chase you and then they explode. Uh, those things will also wreck you. All right, that's a skill point that I always forget to actually claim. I always do the quest, then forget that I actually need to go and pick up the skill point from it, from it later. Is that how it works, Sam? Okay. Yeah, corpse explosions again, like really dangerous mechanic in the game. That would make sense because uh, monsters can have very large amounts of life, so a corpse explosion from a monster can be uh, somewhat more deadly than you're expecting. You see here how Lightning Spire Trap and Lightning Trap uh, complement each other. So here's a pack of monsters I'm only going to use Lightning Trap or Lightning Spire on. Uh, it's fairly slow. Like I throw it. Uh, I'll do the same with the next pack. I throw it. And then it feels like it's about maybe 1.2, 1.3 seconds until stuff starts dying. Whereas Lightning Trap doesn't do much damage, but it uh, just guts everything. It hits everything on the screen real fast. Uh, so the combination's really good of having both of them. The next significant upgrade I need actually is still Lightning, Lightning, Spire, uh, Lightning Spire Trap. Uh, it needs to pick up, um, it needs to be four linked. It's currently in a three link wand. Uh, yeah, there's a corpse here on the ground. That indicates you're going the right way. That means that this is a progression path through. No corpse, incorrect path. Uh, someone suggested to me yesterday that I change to cluster traps from Swift Assembly on Lightning Spire Trap. Uh, sorry, on Lightning Trap, and that was an excellent change. You don't want that on Lightning Spire. Uh, Lightning Spire, you want to be, in a very controlled way, throwing exactly one trap at a time. Okay, um, here's the... This should be the quest mobs because I've got a bunch of... Um, like I saw a lore thing. Usually you'll see the lore thing on your minimap. So if I come back to here and see on my minimap there's this uh, lore marker, that's my indicator, my tell that you're near the uh, you're near it. You've got the official orders. I got in the oh yeah, that's right. That is a chess piece. That's um, move speed only. Knew it was doing something for me. I couldn't remember what. Move speed and a lot of evasion actually. Like it's a pretty good piece for uh, just pure evasion. I'm going to need to go to the vendor after this. So when I get to the next waypoint, the Imperial Fields waypoint, I will uh, go back to town. If I miss that waypoint, which I sometimes do, uh, then at that point I will go to the other spot. I have no intention of ever going for that, uh, for that, going for that one H plan. That would take forever. The listening to every bit of lore, because there's a bunch of lore that once you miss it, you can't recover it. Like you've lost it. It's um, it people do have it. There are individuals that have it, but those people are masochists. And I say that as someone that likes Path of Exile's lore. Uh, getting getting all the things on one character, which includes listening to every piece of dialogue from every NPC including ones that are only available before certain quests. Oh, horrid. All right, there's our waypoint. That's what we're looking for. Uh, we'll hit this thing just because we can. Just because it's there. Hey, Crazy, uh, I don't think I've got that set up, but um, the path of building as it was at the start of this stream, I will grab for you in a sec. 
uh, I do have that saved. So I will I'll post that in chat in one sec. That's it. Um, where are you? So I'm just looking through. I've got this uploaded to YouTube at the moment, but I haven't made it visible. This is yesterday's stream. There it is. Ah, oh, there you go, crazy. So hopefully that's uh, that's useful. That's as it was at the start of this stream, uh, and I had um, managed to clean forget to do the first labyrinth. Uh, that was because of just um, not needing the power. So I've done the labyrinth since then. Crangled. Uh, not enough lightning damage to be worth it. That's a lot of fire damage and crit. I'm going to use that. I'm not really scaling fire damage, but that's just... Uh, it got the crit and... Yeah. Uh, so I don't have the 200 int for it yet, but that is going to be an upgrade when I get it. It's been smooth for leveling. Like I said, I forgot to ascend. And that's always a good sign. That just means that you're... Uh, that means that you are uh, miles more powerful than you need to be. Oh, Kashara Star. I should... Let's turn in all the quests now. Uh, so we've got a Gemling Legion reward to pick up. Uh, it's just, oops, skill point. Uh, we've got a Clarissa point to pick up. And we've got something, some stuff in Act 7. Uh, possibly a couple of skill points actually there. I don't think I picked up anything in Act I don't think I went back to town in Act 7 at all. Uh, I hope I'm right on that. Because then I'll have, uh, I'll have quite a lot here. Skill point. Skill point. Hey, that's better. Get all this stuff that I'm forgetting because I need it. Need the power. Skill point. Hey, Peter, thanks for the follow. And uh, you're unlikely to be of any use, but I'll take you. Yeah, you're useless to me. Um, this thing is regret orbs, isn't it? I can't remember. I'll, I'll go do it. Just because I always forget whether that quest is worth doing or not. And so it's worth doing it once now just to remember whether it's worth doing or not. Uh, Master Sapper is good. Uh, five additional traps is somewhat useful. Uh, trap trigger area is great. Um, traps can't be damaged. No, I'm going to take traps can't be damaged. And we'll go the life cluster, of course. And this is an evasion cluster. And right now, at least, I get a lot of benefit out of um, increased evasion rating from body armor. I'll take that for now. I may not keep that forever. Hey, Peter, thanks. I am using um, Lightning Spire Trap for the for bossing, yeah. I was going to do this stupid quest that I always forget. Oh, this is the wrong one. Uh, wrong waypoint. Uh, just because I can't remember whether it's useless or not. I think it is. I'm pretty sure it is useless, this quest. I think it's uh, an amulet. Like a rare amulet. Yeah, I expect Seismic Trap will actually get gutted this time. I thought it would get nerfed last time. Uh, but when they didn't nerf it last time and it ended up being the best build of early in this league as well, uh, it was like, nah, that's not going to happen. I think I, I'm using... The way I'm using the cooldown traps, I don't think I want to uh, have... I don't think I want to use Culling Strike on it. Like, I'm using the cooldown traps for to do most of the damage on heavy, on heavy targets. I might actually use Culling Strike on Lightning Trap instead, if I was going to use it at all. That'd be how I'd do it. You'll notice I've just got Vile Spark. That's just because it's what I happen to find uh, in the way of Vile Skills. It's not the best Vile Skill, uh, but it's good enough to use. It is indeed an amulet, yeah. Oh, well. Let's uh, press F for Groost anyway.
I did recall it as being skippable. I couldn't remember exactly why, so let's just remind myself. Do I actually want an amulet? Yeah, I do. So, like, if I can get a strength and intelligence amulet, I'll take it. Strengthening Ami. Hey, guess what? It's terrible. About as useful to me as a dead cat nail to a tree. Oh, uh, yeah, look, I'm not going to respect Seismic Trap. I'm quite happy to see it. I'm quite happy to see Seismic Trap dumpstered. Uh, you'll notice I'm not using Scourge here. Uh, that's intentional. That's to mimic the situation next, next league. Uh, Scourge you would always want to use a bit when you're leveling just because it gets you started on a character and it gets you your first five link really easily. But I'm deliberately not using it because I don't want to uh, use rely upon things that won't be there next league. It makes a huge difference on how fast you uh, progress. Hey, it's over here, isn't it? Yeah, I was watching um, like a bunch of the end game of Gauntlet as well. That was uh, that was crazy. Like just seeing how quickly people uh, were getting it, getting through the the end game with all of the Gauntlet stuff on as well. Because obviously with Gauntlet being so unforgiving, a lot of the softcore strategies for fast boss killing don't work. Uh, absolutely nothing, Erm. I don't think we can predict that at all. Um, I don't think there's any information to base it on, uh, except to say it's probably going to be a simple mechanic for the league. BAMA, mind, uh, mind freeze at the moment on what that actually is. I'd be somewhat surprised to see a uh, massive pack size um, mechanic because we just had one and it wasn't that well received well. That wasn't that received, received that well. I think it might be a while till we get another massive pack size league like Scourge. Oh, Blink Arrow, 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 okay. What's that reliant upon to get going well? Because that's something I, I don't know anything really about um, how it plays. I think every league has mechanics that fall flat, though, like, that are part of them. And, um, you know, like, Delirium, for instance, I don't think that many people use small cluster jewels. But the fact that small cluster jewels are in Delirium doesn't make Delirium any... doesn't make Delirium worse. And that's what the Krangler was. It was just something that was niche. It was a small part of Scourge. And, you know... GDD's biggest mistake was making it available on every item slot. Because then they had to balance it to be quite weak. <laughs> Memory game everywhere. Oh, that would be funny. That would be worth it for the Reddit tiers alone.
Like, who doesn't want to see Reddit going berserk about a um, about memory games in every every second map? I think it'd be hilarious. That's just me being a horrible human being, though. The thing is, top we just had breach two point zero. <laughs> like, that's that's the current league. That's why I don't think we're going to see uh, another breach 2.0 for a while. That's that's what Scourge is. It's like so it's it's breach, but like having ten breaches on the map, and you can activate which you know, whenever you want. I expected the league to be a smash hit, um, because it's so it's what part of Exile Reddit always says it wants. Oh, speaking of Exalted Orbs, that reminds me, I got one in Act 6, this, uh, this character. Uh, I'm gonna skip Gwenon for the moment. You don't really get reroll currencies at this, this point. Uh, Raw Guy would do, the others, nah. Gotta try and keep Dawn in one spot for as long as possible. Uh, that may mean just face tanking a bunch of stuff that I otherwise wouldn't. And that was easy, as a result. Hey, Traps and Mines rank one. Well, Exalts is still useful. I mean, I'm going to shift over to trade at some point on this, but not till I've done a fair bit with this character. Uh, I don't need to do that abyss. I wasn't actually intending to step on it. Uh, huh. Okay, i got to go... Oh, no. Could be up there, too. I'm going to check down here first. Alright, let's drop a bunch of stuff down. Spectral Helix is a build that I think is worth a look into if you're looking for something to play. I say that as someone that hasn't hasn't looked into it myself. It's something I might um, might make some plans for over the next uh, week or so. During this period where everything is... Uh, where it's hype season, but there's not so much news coming out yet that I've got, uh, that I can't really find time to play. Scourge Arrow Ignite, okay. Can see how that would have got um got quite a lot better this league than it was last. It wasn't something I saw people playing um in three fourteen. It does work well with the EO changes, yeah. Hmm. That's intriguing, yeah. You also have this thing where being a uh, damage over time bow build, uh, you're reliant on. You may be reliant on damage projection supports, uh, but they their damage penalties don't apply to you. Because that's uh, hit-based damage, not ailment damage, that gets gutted by things like... Uh, well, not GMP for Scourge Arrow, but the other ones. If it, I think you'd use Chain on that, would you? Or not? I'm not sure. Uh, Scourge Arrow is something I, I haven't really followed since... Well, was last meta back in Delve. I think...
I find that I get a lot of heist caches in this zone. I'm not sure why. Go ice nova. Get out of that. Oh, ah, splat. I actually died. Well, that's uh, what you get when you're playing with uh, 2,222 life in Act in Act Eight, and you're not playing and not paying attention enough. Walk of shame time. That's one of those deaths that wouldn't happen if you were playing um, hardcore. It's more like a uh, who cares moment. Yeah, I tend to uh, go into maps really undergeared and prefer it. That's where you pick up all of the gear quickly. Uh, it's something that you can't do in hardcore, but in softcore you can just go, eh, what do I care? I'll take the odd, I'll, I'll die three or four times, maybe even more than three or four. I'm fine with that. Speed up my gearing a bit. You know, why would I want to run, let's say I wanted to farm a uh, tabula. Why would I want to do that in Blood Aqueduct when I can do it in Waterways map? And get, you know, get quantity bonuses. Oh, Beric's Respite is nuts. That is a very rare item. Uh, never count on getting that SSF. Like, obviously you can get it, but uh, it's tier one rarity. So very, very, very um, rare item to get your hands on. Same as Rizlatha's Coil. I think it's uh, three or four times rarer than Chevron's wrappings. Act 8, Uh Okay, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first way is to get Chaos Resistance first. Uh, a lot of the damage in there is Chaos, a lot is physical. And you can just simply over-level a bit so that you can make it faster. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, if you're wanting to do it when you are genuinely undergeared for the fight, uh, then you need to pay attention to the mechanics with her uh, effluence. Uh, basically, the way that it works is that the longer that you don't press the lever, the more crazy the stuff on the ground gets. Uh, so you want to sort of dodge that. When you, do, when you do press the lever, she will change form, and the second form has a very dangerous physical damage projectile. Uh, you don't. You want to count on that being there, and you want to dodge out of the way when it comes down. Uh, so you don't want it to hit you, and that's quite difficult if you're in melee range. Uh, best sort of tricks for her... Well, probably the easiest way is just simply to out-gear out the fight, uh, especially in hardcore. That's what everyone in hardcore does. They tend to out-gear it. Uh, but otherwise, Amethyst Rings are really good now. So maybe just start looking for them in Act 6 and 7. Pick up every Amethyst Ring you see, uh, throw an Alcor or low, low End Essence on it and see what happens. You'll get ones that are good enough to use, and that'll give you enough Chaos Resistance that Doedre then becomes a physical damage fight. And she doesn't do that much Fizz damage except with her uh, red, red Form Projectile. So I'm, I'm touching those things looking for blueprints mostly. Yeah, it's Ameth remember that Amethyst Ring bases were buffed to the moon and back in um, 316. So they used to be 7 to 13%, I think. And now they cap it, I think it's like 17 to 22 is what they are now or something like that. Uh, they're just miles better than they used to be. And so they've gone from rubbish to genuinely really good. Chaos Resist in other slots is harder to get because uh, Chaos Resist mods are four times as rare as their con as the corresponding Elemental Resistance mods, like there's the same tiers, and they also have three quarters the numerical value of corresponding tiers of Elemental Resists.
The other thing you can do is um, practice the fight, but go in there, don't try and kill her, just try and stay alive. So go in there on a character that's re that's probably more powerful than you need to be to be in Act 8. Uh, say, one that's ready to do Depraved Trinity. And just don't, don't try to hurt her, just try to stay alive and dodge as much damage as you can. That's the other thing you can do that's really useful. That was how I learned... Um, what fights was that? Really all of the Shaper Guardians. I learned them by going in there and not trying to damage them at all. Just focus on staying alive, dodging their skills. Eradicator in particular. So that's not a Shaper Guardian, that's an Elder Guardian. But Eradicator, that was a real help for me on... That's correct, yeah, 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 there's, um, that's in the green form, she has those, those two abilities. Now I'm starting to find that my, uh, life is definitely not holding up anymore, uh, which is fine, I don't, I'm not that fussed about getting more of it. It's just noticeable that I'm taking a lot of damage at the moment, um, in a way that I wasn't even just a couple of monster levels ago. I hate this zone, just the, from a, like, I love the aesthetic of it. Uh, it's why I really like the Moon Temple map, even though it's quite a bad tile set from a gameplay perspective. Um, but I do not like this zone's layout. It's just such a confusing mess at times to navigate. So I kind of think I'm going the right way now, but I'm just not sure of that. Yeah, there's, I mean, related, there's the Divided Hideout. Uh, Peter Carl, I was trying to brainstorm a Blade Trap build and I could never make it work. For a Pneumatic Dagger Poison with Blade Trap. Uh, but I don't know for certain that it can't be done. It's just something I couldn't make work. It just felt like something that could be cool, uh, but I couldn't actually get it over the line. One of the things that was hard with Blade Trap was that uh, the skill doesn't scale the same way as many other things, uh, and that meant it was really hard to find the right balance to make it work. A Pneumatic Dagger is the heist exclusive base that um, its implicit is, well, it's not worded this way, but what it does is elemental damage, your elemental damage from this, sorry, elemental damage dealt by this weapon can poison as though it was chaos damage. That's not the way it's worded, but that's what it does. So it's capable of inflicting poison. It doesn't automatically inflict poison. You still need poison chance. Uh, but it, it has the same capability to inflict poison that it would have if it was not... If it was uh, chaos damage or physical damage. Okay. Uh, got a couple of stat points here. I will just hold on to them for a sec. Okay, at this point we need to go to the bathhouse for a couple of reasons. Yeah, Blizzard Crown is absolutely nuts with it at endgame. Uh, it is it is a really strong base. 
It's one of those bases that's really hard to use well, but is really strong. Uh, I, I'm kind of thinking, like, there's... If the Elder Influence mod was still as good as it used to be, then that would be something you could do with a Squire. Um, but hang on, wasn't it... It was your squire that that you got me to crangle anyway. So you, do you do you still have a squire room, or did that squire have a little bit of an accident with Elva? I think it had an accident, didn't it? I think it's like a victory badge now or something. For anyone that's not following this, um, I, I've had a couple of viewers ask me to double corrupt expensive items on stream. Uh, sometimes that ends up well. And other times, it ends up in a little bit of a tragedy. It's all fun and games until someone loses a squire. And of course, then it's hilarious. There's a white quality 28%. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's that's the one with the, um, with the squire effect on it. So yeah, that um, unfortunately uh, had a little bit of an a his his squire had a bit of an accident, and it's just it's tragic what happens. You know that these these rookie knights these days uh, they just don't get they just don't get treated all that well. Yeah, Best group play build of all time was the um, troll versions. The absolute troll versions of the um, Orobots that someone did a while back. Uh, there was a fantastic build. I think it may have been Eric Haller or someone put together a build that had uh, divergent precision when that used to reduce AoE. And they Aura stacked it to 100% reduced AoE. So funny, that one. For each Avengers to three white socket it. An oppressor. <laughs> oh, that would be fantastic because if you had a three white socket oppressor and it was three linked and you dropped it in a party, you could go absolutely bonkers. Um, like because the, the sound effect for that would be, yeah, that would be cruel. You just drop it in the middle of a map. <laughs> oh, that's evil, Tanky. Hey, BMT, thanks for the follow. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go to the uh, Lunaris concourse and take a walk to the bathhouse. Uh, and I always get lost in this zone. There's a few different layouts for this, and it's, um, I don't really know how exactly they work. This is the Harbour Bridge, I think. Yep. Okay. So that means that it's the one that's uh, down to the. It'll be uh, down left of the base entrance. And here we go, here's the bathhouse. Let's jump jump through this zone. I really like the way you think there, Tanky though. That would be uh that would be quite funny. Just say <laughs> people are gonna think that they've um that there's been a lost lost squire and it's actually uh but it you wouldn't want it to be an influenced rare. You'd want it to be a three white socket uninfluenced. Uh, let's go deal with Yugle first. Yugle's a boss that a lot of people put off. Uh, the trick to Yugle is to know what's dangerous and what isn't. Uh, the stuff that's dangerous in here is the blue balls on the ground that move very, very slowly. If you die to Yugle, it's almost always to those. It's not to uh, it's not to Yugle's individual attacks. Oh yeah, you're right, Tanky. You're right. It does, um, it does break the sockets. But the thing is, if it's influenced, it, it couldn't have dropped influenced in a Val, Valwin's map. 
You might not know that, but it couldn't have. Ah, so tricky to jump down there. Surprising amount of evasion at the moment uh, for this level. Like, stuff is genuinely missing me a lot. Evasion is something people think is in a terrible spot, uh, but it, it's a bit worse than armor is, but it's still really good. And you, the way that I'm just mostly ignoring these porcupines should give a bit of clarification of that. That's flasks down. And I've got no defensive auras on. Ah, uh, 2-gen will do a 2-gen fight. I'm not going to go out of my way to optimise it. I'll just take what I can get easily enough. Which will be... Actually, this is quite quite juicy here. I can get... That seems like a pretty solid lot of... Um, lot of stuff. I really like the way that um, cooldown traps play on expedition encounters. Like, you can just drop down anything you want. Uh, know that a lot of stuff will be dead. And then once you get your hands on... Um, once you start using um, trap cooldown mechan reduction re mechanics later, uh, it gets much better again. Tujin's first offers are almost always terrible. Uh, that's just the way that he works. Uh, you need to invest a... Not an Astragali, an erotic coinage for this guy, isn't it? Erotic coinage. Oh, there's three stack decks is okay. Actually, this is uh, much better than he usually is early on. Um, I will take those. And what else do we want here? Krangle orbs, probably. If I can get them? Yeah, I can easily. I just go stingy. Like real stingy. That'll do. That's all I can really afford. Uh, unless there's um, common artifacts. Are these any good? No, that was actually alright. Oh well. Uh, what is there in common artifacts that I could use? Eh, not that fast. Uh, okay, so let's just get my thing going again. You're pretty much toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Uh, these little balls on the ground are the dangerous thing. They don't stand out very much in appearance, uh, but they're the thing that's going to kill you. If you die here, it's to them. And here's Yugo with those balls, which is where it starts getting a little bit more dangerous. And there he goes. Easy fight when you're familiar with it. Uh, very, very rippy if you're not. And a lettuce vendor. Those two. And think what we're going to do here. We're, we're going to pick up this crit multi section. Uh, so, Throat Seeker cluster. I don't get a huge amount out of this yet, uh, but it's something that will pay off later on in character power and character development, so I'm okay with that. Uh, I need to go back to the concourse because I didn't find the waypoint in here, which is annoying. I do need to return to this zone though because it has the thingamajig in it. 
Uh, it has a Labyrinth Trial in it. As well as the Conqueror's Efficiency Quest as well. Oops, stood in the delirium um, ignite area. It's a mistake, but didn't matter. Powerful enough to not care about little things like that. Okay, uh, so we are still looking for the uh, next labyrinth trial, which is down here. I don't think I'm going to get another um, another Delirium reward, but I'll keep trying. Very unlikely now, actually. Waiting there. And Delirium's expiring. Yeah, I didn't think I'd get there, but I, oh well, it was worth a try. Or it wasn't, but we tried it anyway. First Regal Orb of the League. Uh, those are really useful leveling. Um, they're actually really quite rare. Or well, when I say of the League, I mean of the um, first re first on in Solo Self found. Obviously, I had plenty of them drop in Scourge proper. Okay, it's trial done, and we are now done with uh, Act 8. It's time to go and deal with the sisters and turn in this quest. I should actually turn this in because... Well, let's make sure. I uh, Do I want to use any of these? No, just take the one that's most powerful. All right, now let's go to uh, go to the Celestial Sisters fight. Uh, surely just for something to do, I'll do this file area. This is the one with the teleporting boss. So I'm going to save the rest of my cooldown traps now. I've got a bleed on me. I can't remove it, but it should be fine. All right, now I'm just going to wait for a sec. Let that bleed expire because it's... Uh, we said it'll be fine and it wasn't. And we'll kill that thing. Um, okay, cool. So you actually had the pro prophecy for the Plague Mall one there. Uh, that means, well, not that this is going to matter in the future, but it means that it's more likely to get the Plague Mall 2 from Silver Coins once you've completed it. I am much more likely it's quite common to get it. And that keeps going, but that's not going to matter because prophecy is going away next league. Yeah, I know, Age Plan. I had a whole extra unique monster from it. I'm interested to see how how they um how may uh, how rare they make Kintsugi. That could be quite the chase item if it's rare. 
They may also decide that it's um, quite build enabling and therefore should be common too. Kind of impossible to predict that. There's something fun with this fight that I highly recommend trying. Try to do it without being hit at all. Uh, you have to take it real slow to do that. And I'm not trying it at the moment, but just something that is it is fun to try at some point. It'll really give you a sense of how the encounter works. Like, play it bullet hell style. And it is a lot of fun to do that. Anyways, uh, let's jump to the uh, Blood Aqueduct. Act 9 time. I'm not picking up um, contracts at low level, uh, but I do want to see other high stuff when it drops. There is no reason to kill this guy. He's just here, so I'm going to do it. Like Red Beast with Delirium uh, with delirium in play. Uh, these things are stupidly tanky. That's because both things multiply its hit points. So I think Red Beast status is like a 12 times multiplier or something like that. Uh, then you have Delirium on top, which gives it a substantial decrease damage taken modifier. So it may end up being like 40 or 50 times baseline hit points. All right, now we're out of Delirium. I'm not going to catch it. And that was just random rewards. That was rubbish rewards. Oh, well, we'll take it. I always find when you don't know what a shrine is, uh, you want to be, even in softcore, you want to assume the worst and assume it's one of the horrifyingly dangerous ones. Uh, so I usually act like it's either a Divine Shrine or a Diamond Shrine until I confirm otherwise. And I didn't confirm that one until I'd killed most of the mobs. Divine Shrines are particularly nasty. They're the ones that make all enemies around them uh, immune to, to all damage. They will wreck you if you uh, cop one. Okay, uh, let's push on to Act 9 at this point. Still not feeling any particular urge to uh, power up the character beyond just spending passive points. Uh, I'm not feeling like I need to improve gear. Like, I could. 
and I pro uh, like at some point I want to get things like a sh much better shield, but I've got the damage. I've got the damage. I've got the damage projection that mean that I don't really feel like I'm behind. Uh, this, on the other hand, is Rog. Rog is always worth doing while leveling. Rog is amazing while leveling. And we want quantity of artifacts is really good, and that's a manageable drawback. Uh, increased magic monsters is really good. So we're going to start with this. Uh, I'll pick this up. I actually will have to pick up the impale mod as well, which isn't what I want, but I'll take it. Uh, now we'll take this extra runic, uh, sorry, extra stuff, and that's really all we can get. We can't get much else, so we'll just take that. That's our first spot, that's our second, that's our third. Cooldown trap on H. Unfortunately, we didn't get any reroll currencies from, um, from ROG. You don't always, but the scrap metal are really good early on. Uh, that means that it's going to be pretty limited what I'll get from him. Uh, we will talk to him in the hideout rather than in the middle of a map or map in the middle of a zone. Uh, he's really strong when you've got a bad piece of gear that you just want to upgrade. Uh, he will give you something pretty solid in that slot. Won't necessarily be exactly what you want, uh, but it can be very solid. Plus, there's not that huge an opportunity cost in using him either. One of the biggest early league boosts you can get that people often underestimate is getting a ROG-themed logbook early on. If you get one of those, you are really uh, going to get a lot out of it. At least as long as you wait till you can actually beat it. As the Soul Eater monster, uh, always respect those. They're dangerous. Uh, didn't get to eat many souls, so it wasn't too bad. Okay, and here we go, downward, Bustry Desert, waypoint in this zone, a somewhat mandatory Jun encounter in this zone as well, uh, in that Jun plays up until you do this encounter, like it just is a bit weird until you've done one, uh, her tutorial encounter. So I always recommend doing it while you're going through this zone. Benevolent Guardian monster in the back. Gotta kill that, otherwise we can't kill anything. Alright, I took a lot of damage there. Uh, that was a blue pack, and I'm not sure what mods they had, but um, I am at this point where I'm very squishy now. Um, that would be fixable with gear, but again, gear takes effort. Laziness sometimes is a virtue. Ah. Click it, come on, there we go. Waypoint, now we have a June objective to find in this zone, and we also have a quest objective, uh, the Stormblade. There's the Jun objective, so we'll get that out of the way.
Yeah, I like Frostblink H plan. Uh, I like it a lot. Cold damage. Cold damage has better ailments than um, than fire damage does, and the ailments really do help when you're trying to escape monsters, like the chill and maybe even freeze. Uh, I I do genuinely like Frostblink. I think it's fine. Okay. What have we here? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just take the fist damage mode. Um, All right, we're going to find the other quest in this zone as well. Yep, here it is. I think Frostblink really starts to fall off when you're wanting to do Cirrus. Cirrus is the first boss where uh, Frostblink isn't that good. Uh, until then, I think Frostblink is, is really good for pretty much all content in the game. Because Cirrus, you're more often wanting to, uh, to blink immediately after a blink. Wouldn't normally do this at this point, but uh, let's just go and talk to Sin. I think um, I have everything I need now to do this. I think it's just the other quest in this zone that you need to do. Uh, which is then talk to Paranus and... Yeah. It is just doing that first quest. Then that lets you do the uh, Shak Shakira quest. This is quite a big jump in difficulty, this zone. Uh, from where we were before, but that should be fine. Normally you would do, like, the normal progression is to do this at the end, but, eh, I don't feel like I need to. If people want a sense of the lore of the Betrayal expansion, come in here, uh, Forbidden Vault. It's a, like it's a completely optional area, it only has lore in it, but um, it will give you a bit of a sense of what Jun is fighting for. What she wants to avenge. And here's Shakira. Another boss does a lot of chaos damage, so you need to be quite careful of that. If, uh, like, like Doedre. It's why a lot of people do a late, is just so they're a bit tankier. And also there's this messy part We have to tag her tail in multiple different places while it's attacking you. Ouch. Thought I'd made a move and I hadn't. Yeah, it is kind of rough, this zone. 
One thing I find funny about just the concept of quicksand in general is that between like various pop culture references to it, like pretty much every 1950s to 1980s uh, action film and also games like this, people think it's a common real phenomenon when it actually it's really rare. Yeah, it is a brutal mechanic. Okay, let's go get our um, stat point off of um, Russia, is it for that? Yeah, Russia. And now we are going to move across to Cruel Preparation via the top route. Uh, that's correct. Top route to Cruel Prep is our next plan. Which would mean that about the time we cop our uh, penalty for resist, we'll also pick up Cruel Prep. Yeah, it works well as a narrative, um, like as a narrative point like that. Yeah, great. That's that's what it is. It's like it's it's recognizable. That it did, good old Super Metroid. Um, well, Super Metroid being the one I'm most familiar with. Uh, strong contender for greatest game of the 90s. And that, that, that is a very good decade in gaming. I feel like I'm getting a lot of delirium mirrors on this le on this uh, level up. Yeah, if there's one thing that was done incredibly well in that game, it's the um, it's the secrets in Super Metroid. Oh wow, that was fantastic the way they pulled all the way that they pulled all of that together was unbelievable. Like it was it was findable by yourself, but only just. Remember how long it took me to get 100% in that game and then how much longer it took to work out a way to get both the 100% uh, and the 3 hour ending at the same time. Now, obviously, the like proper speedrun times for that are a lot lower than that, but it was still fantastic how it worked out. Those um, boots are... Uh, i trying to think what they are. Fire damage to spells on this scepter. Like, it's a lot of fire damage to spells. doesn't have anything else on it, so it can stay on the ground. Uh, Danning again. Can't not do a Danning encounter. No fantastic options here, so just um, just a bunch of reasonable stuff. We'll take that, we'll take there, and we'll take there, I think.
I usually prioritize runic monsters over pretty much everything else. Uh, runic monsters and multipliers thereof. Like, currency chests are nice and all, but they're a bonus rather than what I'm here for. What's this thing again? Oh, that stupid item. The one that has the ridiculously good replica. That's uh, tier 1 rarity. Hey, that's good. Yeah, I need to play Hollow Knight. It's uh, very much on my list of this must be played at some point soon. Uh, I've forgotten to do the Boiling Lake at the moment. That's okay. I can come back to it later. Act 9 is really freeform in the order that you do everything in. There's, It's probably the one that has the least compelling you to do it in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Elbron, um, Elbron's Warpath is underwhelming, but all oh, the replica is so good. Oh, that's right. It's this stupid. Does it lay out? You have to either play this careful or have a lot of regen. Because it's just, it's nearly impossible to not get hit in here. Oh. That was a lot of damage there. That is uh, that is my tankiness not holding up anymore. A uh, combination of my evasion no longer being overwhelming uh, and at the same time the monster's hitting harder. Yeah, funny thing with Hollow Knight is I actually bought the game a while ago uh, like knowing I'd like it and then I just never had the right time to play it th through properly. I should have probably done it over Christmas this year, but then I got um, absolutely absorbed into uh, Dyson Sphere program. The number of sort of 6am all night gaming sessions I had on that was, it was um, something I haven't done for a long time, actually. Uh, Cartographer's Stroke Box. I like valing these things um, after Elking them, of course. Get away from that. Okay, I'll have to have a look at some of these. I'm, my belt is like absolute trash tier. This um, would not be hard for this to be better at all. I really should go back to town at some point. Let's ID this, uh, this Onyx Amulet so that we can throw it on the ground. Then we can pick this up. And we can consolidate those. We can ID this. We can throw it on the ground. And then we can push to the next waypoint. another Danning encounter. There's two in consecutive zones. Well, we know what we have to do. You don't uh, you don't walk past the Danning encounter, do you? Um, physical immunity is fine. Monsters always crit is horrible. Uh, I'll just be careful.
Uh, I got a bleed on me. Uh, so these are the ones that always crit as well. Oh, sorry, always crit and always freeze. So I don't really want to get hit at all by these. I don't have any anti-freeze. And we didn't, so that's fine. Go loot everything, not have to pick up any rubbish, which is great. And... We got basically nothing. All right, let's go get our waypoint, then go back to town. Yeah, Danig is not the most common of the uh, four NPCs to find. Certainly the one you always want to find. All right, jump back to Highgate and we will, uh, we will drop some stuff in the stuff away. Um, ah. Frustrating, I haven't got that set up properly. Uh, we'll go vendor some stuff. Bye. Oh, you got a reward for me. Bad reward, but I'll take it. And can we use this now? We have the intelligence for it now. Um, so what do we have currently? We've got an average 24 cold damage. This is quite a bit more damage. Uh, we have 48% spell damage. We have 31%, so it's a bit worse. 72% crit chance versus uh, 11%. Yeah, this is just... This is just uh, objectively better. That's not, not hard to see that. And I can also benchcraft um, another mod onto that, so I will do that. What else do we have here? Uh, 12 cold, which is quite nice at um, high level, but not at this level. Uh, big resists on this ring, and it can have benched. Yeah, this is an upgrade for sure over one of the rubbish ones we've got. Uh, this is completely useless, so that's just a straight swap. Uh, except that now we have no end. Okay. We'll have to fix that. Yeah, yeah, I quite like that ring, I gotta say. Um, so, firstly, life on this. Done. Secondly, intelligence somewhere. How much do we need? Four. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard. And what are our resists looking like at the moment? Fine. Wow. Six mods. Uh, you've got excess lo excessive lightning resist. That's fine. Let's get rid of you. Replace you with an intelligence craft on the bench. Oh, wait. Not an option. In that slot. Uh, you can be changed to a intelligence craft. Now, what was my... Uh, what did I have on Q before? I had nothing on Q, didn't I? Okay, so now we want to put um, flat cold spells on this if we can get it. I think we can. No, it's uh, considered to clash with the flat fire spells. Um, oh, well, we'll just have to do without that. So our cold resist is actually slightly undercapped at the moment. That's a little annoying. We could change this. Or, no, we can't get it there. Change to cold plus lightning if we've got that, which I think we do. Yep, perfect. Not strong enough, okay? And that is giving me the strength that is needed for the stupid golem. That's going to get annoying. Okay. Alright, that's, um, that's quite a bit better. Let's go and push on to the boiling lake, the area that we forgot to do.
Um, I do like them a lot while leveling. Uh, I don't necessarily use them at endgame, but for leveling, uh, I would find I would rather a Stone Golem to Vitality Aura. Uh, just because of the mana issues with associated with Vitality. And generally it is the Stone Golem I like to use leveling. The main spot that it's really good is in Labyrinth. Uh, that's where it's great, but elsewhere it's still fine, I find. Uh, mapping, though, it does start to get you unpredictably killed. I don't find I lose them that often. Like, this guy, yeah, this guy will... Um, this guy will wreck your golems. Um, but he's a bit of an unusual boss in that regard. Where they where they are bad is if they're uh, under level for the for the uh, content you're doing. Let's uh, turn in one of those. Uh, let's go find uh, the other boss in this area. So it's Garakan. Uh, Garakan, yeah. That flighty boss. I will still keep leveling that up for now. Uh, if I end up. I'll probably end up dropping it at some point when it can no longer level any further. But yeah, Stoner Golem at the moment is giving me 85 life regen per second, which is actually quite a lot for something that's so zero uh, that's so close to zero opportunity cost. When I get Pyromaniac from the Ascendancy, though, at that point, uh, I will definitely drop it. Then I'll have the regen without without the uh, loss of control over bosses that comes with a golem. Okay, let's grab the Sekma Feather. And now off to probably my pick for the third worst um, zone in the game. Uh, not because it's particularly obnoxious, the layout or anything. I just don't like it at all. I don't know why, but the factory zone is one that really just annoys me. Do you find Garakan that bad? Like, I find she can be annoying. I, I dislike her in dig map because when you're mapping, you 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 kind of want her to be down faster. Uh, but for during the campaign, I don't mind longer bosses. You're doing stuff the whole time. I'll always have a mana flask during a, a during that spot, and like worst case scenario, I'll just uh, teleport. I'll just pour it out for flask charges on the mana flask. This zone I do not like. This is one that really does annoy me. Uh, it's just an awkward, awkward layout. We have good old. Uh, Tangmazu giving us a couple of lectures on the nature of power as he sees it. I was thinking the other day, Tangmazu seems like his philosophy is based upon the, the Sith from Star Wars. Like, not so much uh, the films, but the, the books where you get to actually see the Sith a bit more. If anyone's read the Darth Bane trilogy, uh, Tangmazu really comes across as being like 
Darth Bane, uh, very similar, very similar ideologically to Darth Bane. Hey, right, here's the boss fight. Um, there's one where I always put down a um, portal because it's kind of rippier than it looks. It's one of the easiest fights in the game to just die on when you're not expecting it. Mostly because he has a really unpredictable earthquake move. Anyway, we didn't, so jump back to town. We will go and do the thing that annoys half of the Path of Exile community and give the uh, feather to Arasha. I actually think that the, the Darth Bane books are fantastic. Um, they are really, really, really good. Like, it's not often that you get a villain origin story that's done well. And, and like, really quite well. Uh, we were going across to Cruel Prep at the moment. Possibly unpopular opinion, but Star Wars 1, oh, so Phantom Menace, would have been good if uh, Jar Jar was reduced in it. Like, would have been a genuinely really good film without that. Oh, that's Palpatine. Palpatine's a caricature. I don't think Palpatine's a very compelling character uh, in, at any point in the Star Wars franchise. Uh, except in Phantom Menace, he's better. But that's in Phantom Menace because you don't have him acting like that. He's instead more of a behind-the-scenes plotter type. Jar Jar as Sith Master would have been hilarious, yeah. That was like the best fan theory ever, and it, it is definitely my headcanon. Misa called Jar Jar Binks, Misa Darth Lord of the Sith. And speaking of um, Star Wars and just memes in general, uh, April 1st, Path of Exile should announce a new unique map, a Mesa with the name Jar Jar Binks. But I think they should have had um, Jar Jar be a five minute comic relief character that was then never seen again. If they had done that, I think that that would have made The Phantom Menace into a good film. Like, you know, you'd have this thing that's just a brief little bit of comic relief, not long enough to get old, uh, and then he's just sort of ends up as being not very important from then on. Okay, we're taking massive damage here from these blades. I probably should get an anti-bleed flask because... Uh, at this rate, I am actually going to die when I cop a big bleed on me at some point. That's going to be annoying. These zones for a walk of shame, it's unpleasant. Just because it's such a long way to walk. It is, yeah. This and um, Blood Aqueduct... But Blood Aqueduct is a bit more predictable. Like, people, uh, you've got also more room to sidestep attacks there, too. 
Whereas here, you can't sidestep stuff. You're definitely going to get hit by it. You're going to be bleeding. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll wreck you in here. This is definitely a nasty zone if you're in hardcore. Um, speaking of... Um, I kind of should upgrade flasks. I mean, I can't be bothered at the moment, but I should do so. I always think it's a good sign if you don't feel the need to upgrade gear, but you can take that too far. Anyways, let's just say that and then not actually act on my own good advice. Uh, and let's go and push forward. Go play with Siobhan. Okay, Chevron's Arena. And splat. That makes a lot of sense, development is saying that you got used to it in hardcore because you focus all the time. Never relax. Yeah, I kind of feel like they should upgrade um they should upgrade the weapons that attack attack scaling characters have access to um during leveling. I think the way you would do that is by making middle tier rolls on items more common than they currently are. So something like um, tier 5 fizz percent uh, could do with being maybe more common than than any other any other fizz percent roll. Whereas at the moment, I think tier 5 is a bit rarer than tier, tier 6. Uh, I should probably be more common than tier 6 and then leave tiers 1, 2, 3, and 4 being a bit rarer. That would give, um, give you the ability to easily roll something sort of okay. Alternately, they could make regals more accessible in leveling, and then you could use uh, bench crafting and uh, and the vendor recipes. Although you won't have that many granite flasks for the vendor recipes either. Maybe they could make the vendor recipe more doable. That's it. I'm not sure it's every act that you need to upgrade weapon. Maybe every second. Okay, uh, let's just... Could you not, Malagaro? Thank you. This guy is nasty. Very much a do not rest fight. Then there's that split phase that comes in when you're not really expecting it. Okay, Doidre, the most dangerous boss in Act 9. Oh, <laughs> Trash Monsters, the most dangerous boss in Act 9. Uh, better to get the death out of the way when I've got no XP at all and I'm right at the start of the zone. Uh, of course, it's a monolith that I wasn't factoring in. I was cursed. Cursed and cursed bad. Do you can blitz through this zone or you can kill stuff? Either way works.
I usually kill through it. And that's because I die in here often enough that, uh, like, this is, this is probably the place I die most in Act 9. Uh, this zone. Not the actual Trinity fight, but the, uh, Doedre fight. I used a dumpster claw um, for my lightning strike radar all the way through to um, through to like early red maps, I think. Like, and when I say dumpster, I mean real dumpster. I mean grab two screaming essences and keep the better one. It was that bad. Uh, I've killed myself here, I think. Oh, wow, I'm going to actually survive that. Face tank the tantrum. Did not expect that. Yeah, I thought I'd killed myself there by uh, de destroying all of the things that she drops down. Uh, usually that's a death sentence on this fight, but... No, nah, I managed to survive it. It's going to happen again now. This time I can't survive it. There. That would have been an easy survive in hardcore by logging out, but... Well, keep in mind I'm regenerating, regenerating 30 life every time she sets off one of my traps. That's the reason I was able to do it, but uh, that's not enough forever. That's a big lot of cold dispels. Uh, that's a big lot of spell damage. That's an upgrade, isn't it? Uh, I don't have the crit on it. I'm not sure if that's an upgrade or not. 4,800... 5,000, yeah, okay. I'll trust that that is probably an upgrade. Uh, does it change any resists? It does, doesn't it? Not in a bad way, though. I also prefer having cold damage to fire damage. So Depraved Trinity has the second highest uh, life multiplier of any monster in the game. Uh, the highest being Katava in Act 10. Uh, that's why he's so tanky. But it seems to be going down fine. Has like a 4,700% life multiplier. Uh, I think Shaper has 2,600 for comparison. So if you encountered the Depraved Trinity, the Act Boss version that has the name Depraved Trinity, not the Carcass Map version, uh, then if it was in a if it was in um, the Monster Level Six Eighty Four Zone, it would have more than a hundred million hit points. Yeah, Proj Speed is a secret MVP, is a hidden MVP on a lot of things. So it's one of those thing, stats that never, it never shows up anywhere, but it just does good things for you. Uh, this is absolute dumpster. Yeah, I thought so. Um, like that's still dumpster, but it's better than what I have. I just don't have enough strength for it. Oh, well. Go to Act 10. Uh, do I want to just spec into... No, nah, I'm not going to bother specking into Strength Node. It's not the end of the world at the moment. I'll figure, it out. I'll figure out Strength later. Bit of meme. That's definitely not getting um, anything much done with it. That can go away. That's no longer of any use at all. See, this is the sort of thing that I would use if I was playing Lightning Strike. Uh, you will pick up something like this. This is just a solid double double element roll. Nothing amazing, but good enough. That'll get you to uh, that'll get you to tier ten with a bench craft of attack speed on it. That's an upgrade for sure. 
Oh God, yeah. Ah, that was on ours. I couldn't remember if it was face breaker or not. And these will all be trash. Uh, would I use this at this point? No, 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 not 12. No. Um, nah. No one's going to want it in trade either. Okay, so first step, uh, replace this awful belt with this solid one. Uh, that should fix all our strength, shouldn't it? Oh, oh, not even close. All right. Oh, well, in that case, we're not going to keep this, this shield. So damage obviously scales up heaps now that we're in Act 10. Uh, trash monsters will start hitting a lot harder. But that's fine. That's the sort of shield we're looking for. Um, various kite shields. And we'll push on to the Act 10 uh, main central area. to get started in mapping. I think I have all four different maps covered now. Uh, now that once we count in the, uh, once we count in access to thing mini jigs maps. Coronal leather is nice. Uh, at some point, I'm going to need to upgrade Lightning Spire Trap to a Four Link. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but that is something that is definitely on the radar as needing to be done. The fact that uh, we're doing fine on a Four Link and a Three Link at the moment, though, without a Damage Aura, means I am pretty confident with this for the Axe. Okay, that's dead end. That's annoying in Delirium. Always like trying to keep Delirium going for a while if you can. Uh, Alright, let's let that expire. Grab our loot, and we've got our waypoint, which is what we're here for. Uh, Nemesis item um, is a very slim chance of getting a headhunter. 
Uh, unfortunately, one of the Beric rings is tier 4, which means you've got very little chance of getting Headhunter off that. I think it's uh, the... I think it's the Beric uh, that is fro Freeze and Fire. So Freeze and Ignite, that's the one that's super common. So that one may actually be like 250 times as common as Headhunter from that card. All right, there's the stupid quest item. Uh, not that that was important. The thing that's important here is the lab trial. A really irritating trial to this one. So like it's super safe, but it's also super frustrating because you're stuck so long moving at slow speed. You could tumbler, yes, you could. I'm sure that throughout the history of the game, there are several people who have gotten a headhunter that way. So we're going to turn in these uh, this quest here. Crangled. Um, bitter meme is just... So the problem with vendoring this item is that you get all of the gems that it turns into. Uh, that always puts you in a bad mood. Yeah, you can get a Barracks Respite. Barracks Respite is worth less than a set of that card, usually. Uh, it is It is a headhunter, a gamble only. And I do suspect Barracks Respite to be like 25... No, 50, to, 50 or more times rarer than the common barrack ring. Hey, Torch Courts it is. Um, I picked up a Beric's Week 1 of this league and it was cheap. Like, I was expecting it to be multiple exalts when I knew I wanted it. Nah. Nah, 50 C. I was day two as well. That wasn't that wasn't late in week one. I was really surprised at how cheap Barracks Respite was. I, as I said, I thought it would be... I thought it had the potential to be 10x week one. Okay. Yeah, uh, like Beric's Respite is such a powerful item, absolute monstrously powerful item, but um, it's also really quite, um, 
really quite rare. I'm, it's, yeah, far undervalued in trade. I don't think I'll end up doing any serious uh, betrayal on this on this um, account thing. Well, on this, uh, like, because this is the SSF, I'm going to merge it into the normal thing once I'm at a point that I'm finished. Oh, yikes, I got to, no, nah, I can't survive that. I got Corrupting Blood on me. Uh, corrupting Blood kicks in at monster level 60. So that's the first time I've encountered it, and it's really bad for this build. Have to have immunity to it. Just, uh, like, for a little while I could get by with a manual bleed removed, but I don't even have that at the moment. Because softcore life. While I do this walk of shame, I'm just going to get one of the stupid Twitch ads out of the way. Otherwise, um, the... Spam is going to happen for people joining the stream. Sorry about that. Won't be too long. Okay, good work. The corrupting, corrupting blood guy is dead. Okay, cool. Where are we now at this point? We'll just, I'll just wait out the rest of this stupid ad. Oh. Yeah, on what you were saying about if they don't nerf Detonate Dead, Barracks will be expensive next league. Um, I think that Detonate Dead Ignite is gutted for sure. I don't think there is any chance that build remains in a playable state next league. Like, it took players a while to find how OP it was this league, uh, but it was off the charts power-wise. You know, a one-link detonate dead does more damage than a six-link of pretty much any other ignite skill. Uh, and not just detonate dead either. Like, if detonate dead gets, uh, gets nuked, then you wind up with the other corpse spells replacing it. Uh, the whole concept of scaling up monster corpse life as high as it can be scaled now is definitely going, I reckon. And I don't think they'll under-nerf it either. I think they'll get it... They'll get it to a point where it's either right or where it's been... or where it's unplayable. I don't think it'll be left too good. Hey, level up. Hey, Mike. It's been fun so far. This is uh, this is strong, at least in the axe. Uh, it's definitely my thoughts so far. Like, if it turns out that this falls off hard in mapping, at the very least, it's a strong option for leveling. Uh, if I wanted to run to a hundred in solo, self found this league uh i would really like i'm just not i'm not masochistic enough to be able to accept the premise of that question uh, yeah sorry man i would not i would not even consider that in ssf oh that just sounds like pure pain uh but what region would i run if i wanted to be xp focused let's say i wanted to hit 96 in ssf or 97 in ssf um 
I kind of like. I kind of feel like heist is always the safest way to get to ninety to ninety seven. Uh, and heist is really good for XP at the moment, so that sort of pushes me to Lyra Arthane maybe. Map in Lyra Arthane, pick up a whole bunch of contracts, then run all the contracts back to back. After, oh well, scour all the contracts, run them back to back as just super safe content. That's probably how I'd go about um, getting 97 if I wanted to. I would. I just wouldn't do 100 though. That's uh, that's just pain. Yeah, your build is going to impact it as well. There, I'm assuming you're doing it on something like a raider that's that's fast, fast and medium resilience. Like you're playing something mega tanky, you might do something different. All right, let's go play with Avarius at this point. Yeah, if you've got a lot of heist contracts, um, just running them scoured is a good way to get a lot of, um, a lot, 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 lot of XP. Um, you'll use Huck uh, wherever possible, and you will um, you just basically go f go to the objective, then go backwards after you've got the objective and go back to the start. Uh, but also then run back to the objective. So don't exit the first chance you get, but run all the way to the end of the to the end item again, killing all the things that are on your way, and then um, exit that time, the second time after you after you've been to the end twice. That way you'll get a lot more respawns to kill. Oof, that does a lot of damage. Just just touched that thing at the end. Was trying to dodge it and didn't quite get it right. Hey, Cutty Grass, how's it going, right? Crangled. And I'm just going to sit on... No, I'll sit on that for the moment. Uh, what I've got is... It's slightly better than what I've got. Sorry, what I've got is slightly better, but they're close. Yeah, Betrayal for XP is a good call too. Just, uh, again, that would be on easily rolled maps. Because just talking to Jun is a lot of XP on a Betrayal encounter. Oh, that is very much a rip moment. Can we get a bunch of um, respect in chat for Cutty Grass's PC? Um, that's definitely getting an, an F. the low effort way to say we're sorry to hear that, but actually we're just sort of not that concerned either. If we were better people, we'd be more sorry. That's why I love the press F to pay respects meme still. Might be old and stale, but... <laughs> So this zone is so easy to die in the canals, uh, and it's a long walk of shame when you do. Uh, so it's something I'm always like conscious of. I'm always, or almost always, really undergeared here in softcore, uh, and this is no no exception. If you know the Katala fight, you don't need that much gear to fight him. Uh, it can be long if you don't have much gear, but you know it's it's very manageable. Um. Early impressions are that it's too early to say, Josh. It's like you really, like we really have very little info so far. Like, I mean, I've been putting out the videos about the teasers we've been getting, but they're they're small. Like we just do not have much yet. Uh, 
I'm hoping we see a reduction in the amount of uh, optimization needed in Endgame in terms of like just fiddly work, things like reapplying sextants and stuff like that. I'd be quite happy to see sextants uh, go away entirely or become uh, like boss drops only so that they're no longer something that's spammed. But that's just, that's a wish list rather than, rather than anything else. Like one philosophical question I always start with when thinking about things like this. Imagine two players, right? You have Alice who's a power gamer and you've got Bob who is a casual end gamer. When I say casual end gamer, Bob is like the hardest content he's capable of is the shaper and not necessarily beating the shaper first try uh, in a league. So, you know, sort of person that six weeks into the league beats the shaper and that's the sort of cap of their progression. Alice, on the other hand, is Uber Elder by day four level. So here's the philosophical question. If it takes Bob an hour to farm X amount of currency, how long should it take Alice to farm it? So I'm going to pose that question. Do you think it sh that Alice's efficiency should be such that she could farm that currency in three minutes? Uh, do you think it should be 15 minutes? Do you think it should be 30? Do you think it should be only 45, like where they're pretty close? How, how big a gap do you think there should be in currency acquisition between someone of Alice's power level and Bob's power level? Yeah, I think a lot of people do resemble Bob. Like, Bo Bob's are... The majority of players over level, over level 90 are Bob's. The majority of people over level 98 are Alice's. But yeah, so if it takes Bob an hour, how long should it take Alice to farm that amount of currency? Yeah, cooldowns are something this game has never really used. Uh, and that's something that I think would be interesting to see experimented with. Although um, I do think that the Alice's would circumvent it by multiple accounts. Uh, so it would have to be very carefully thought out how you do it. So philosophically, I think the answer to this should be about 15 minutes. But at the moment, it's currently two or three minutes is the way that the game currently is. So like I, I'm fine with Alice getting four times the currency per hour. I don't think she should be getting 20 to 30 times the currency an hour that Bob gets. Uh, whereas at the moment, it is definitely the case that it is that it is uh, 20 to 30 times. And the biggest offender is Nemesis 3. If they got rid of Nemesis 3, uh, that would close the gap a lot. have here that'll take this is a rubbish pile here ah oh, corrupting blood I'm dead yep squish CB I need an answer to that. I don't have it yet, but I'll need to get one. Uh, let's just take value. Because, like, the market ultimately has a bit of an impact on things like lower-level crafting currencies like alterations. You know, like, there's they're not going to have an equal amounts of both in terms of what they get dropping. Why is it that... This is really strange. My... Lightning Spire Trap does not trigger Corrupting Blood, but my Lightning Trap does, it seems. Or does it? How does that work? 
So I'm not getting any corrupting bloods. This boss has corrupting blood here. I'm not sure how that is working. How did I get corrupting blood before, but I'm not getting it now? I'm not sure how it works. Yeah, if they get rid and if they get rid of Nemesis Three, Alice's are going to cry on Reddit, and they're going to say this is GGG screwing over the casual player, and they will know it's a lie, but that is how they will say it, because they know exactly how to uh, get a Reddit mob going. Uh, Frost Blink would get me two stacks. Uh, that's the most. Oh, Val Spark. That's how. I set up Val Spark at the start of the fight. Well, that's a uh, that's something to learn. Like Val Spark is useful, uh, but it does have a drawback here, and I probably uh, that means I need to get rid of it. Basically, it's getting me killed to random stuff that I shouldn't die to. Now that's the sort of thing that's good to realize why you're dying. Like that's one of those funny, stupid deaths. Uh, Cause that happened three or four times to me that I died of corrupting blood. I couldn't work out why. And all along it was, um, it was due to that. Quite fine with that. It's a reminder of a mechanic that you can easily forget. Uh, your Vile skills don't just do damage to things, they hit things. Okay, let's go play with Kitty. Here, Kitty, 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 Kitty. Here, Kitty, 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 Kitty. So Kitava has an absolutely monstrous amount of hit points compared to everything else at this point in the game. Uh, Kitty actually has more hit points than a tier 10 Conqueror of the Atlas would have. That's once you count the heart phases as well. Ah, crangled. Usually you don't die to Kitty. That was just bad play. I got myself snookered there. Uh, I am squishy, so I don't have room for mistakes. Uh, but that was... That was a pretty bad play to make that mistake. Oh. Bad stuff on the ground. His lightning trap, actually. His Voltaxic lightning trap or whatever it is. Oops, splat. All right, well, we're, we're under geared. We're just going to uh, brute force this, I think. This point. Oh. <laughs> All right, brute force it is. Um, this is something, if you're under geared for this fight, it can be hard to re-enter because of the trash like this. Uh, these phases. I always misjudge that uh, grab sin or innocence animation as, um, especially in La especially in Lava Lake map, actually, more so than against Kitty himself. I always misjudge what he's doing at that point. I'll fire off my big, big traps and stuff like that early. Oh, I'm in trouble there. I thought I was actually going to die at that point. Frost Blink was a weakness at that spot. All right, this is his uh, floor is lava move. One more heart face. And crangled. All right, so that's act 10 down. Uh, Kitava was ugly. That was just me being undergeared for the fight. Uh, I'm now in a position, though, where I'm fine for mapping, for early mapping. 
Uh, I think I just need to slightly fix a resist. I need to get fire and lightning, uh, 20 points or so of it. That just means I need to replace these. We get real gloves in place of these. This could have fire and lightning in the very short term, uh, just from a benchcraft, and we're fine. Well, let's just go and benchcraft fire and lightning, and then we'll do Kerak's fetch, fetch quest. Uh, that should be good enough. We're not capped, but we're not that far off either. Uh, we're still in our real dumpster tier gear, but it'll do. Hang on. Uh, gamble for items. Uh, I don't have it anyway. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Like Your, your tier 5 uh, rarity uniques are just not something you really care about, hey? Uh, they're, not, um, they're not a good item, even though they are slightly rarer than a rare item. I think it would take a lot to make map uh, to make uh, farming Katava worth it. Like I can't see them upgrading loot to that extent. And honestly, I don't think it would be a fun gameplay loop either. So what do we want here? I think we just want instant. Yeah, instant Audi curse. I'll take that. That'll do. That's good enough. Mana Flask, I just need this to be a um, anti-bleed, I think. This is the sort of stuff you would have done much earlier if this was hardcore. Um, nah, I'll be bothered with, with beast crafting this to finish it. That would be funny, Fossil Ghost Ride. That would be really quite funny. Oh, uh, come on, just see if we can get this from... Nah. Anti-Shock. Charge Recovery with Nut. Ah, uh, for Boating, I can't really use... Anti-Shock, Anti... -shock, anti Come on, you can do an anti-bleed at some point. Ah, there we go. Uh, not a terrible starting point. What's the... Oh, what? <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Anyways, um, it's only 300 life. I'm just going to use it. Ugh. That was like an awful augment. That's the one augment you can get that's worse. That's worse than not having one. And... Well, there's a divination card that only drops during the axe, but it's so rare that people don't care about it. That's the one for uh, Onigarashi. And... I don't think it's a fun gameplay loop, really. Like, if you had a unique item that's only available there... Like, let's take, for instance, Tumblr. What's your thoughts on the... Labyrinth exclusive uniques because Labyrinth is a good example of content that players, most players outgear the Labyrinth at some point in their progression by the muscular golden ass of innocence, what was that? sorry that's just such a great line and no one enjoys farming on Igarashi People farm on Igarashi because they get suckered in by a troll who made this cruel way of getting an item. Like, that's really what it is. Ayani Igarashi is one of the most masochistic items 
ever added to Path of Exile. Four on Igarashis. Yeah, well, I mean, you can, uh, farming Chevron for Chevron's wrappings is doable at the moment, though. Like, that is actually a thing in the game. Uh, a lot of the Chevron bosses in maps have the divination card, the offering. A uh, heist armor chest turned out to be a better way to get it, but um, that is the second best way to get the item. How am I for passives now? Missing Valentra, which I knew. Um, missing Deal with the Bandits, which I knew. Well, obviously. Yep, that's right. I got everything except for um, Valenta. But like you would fight the Chevron ba Chevron map bosses for it, and that's a fine. W that is a fine way to get that item. Oof! So much damage there from uh, these things. Once, once you get that lightning, um, that lightning degen and debuff on you. Oh, that's rough. This is an example of Frostblink actually being meaningfully worse than other than other move skills here. Uh, what was what command? Uh, text command I did earlier. I've not typed in text much in this stream. <clears throat> oh yeah, sorry. Slash passives. Yeah, that's correct. What um what AKM said. I I've forgotten what I what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So that that will list all of the passive skill points you quests in the game. Well. If you have not yet killed Act 10 Katava, it will list all the ones you've done. If you have killed Katava, it will list all of the passive skill points in the game, and you'll then be able to audit what you're missing. So I'm missing Deal with the Bandits because I chose to help Alira, and I am missing Valenta's Vengeance because I just couldn't be bothered doing that at the time. Valenta's like miles harder than everything else at, at late in the game. I'll go back and do it now though. It's a good way to check if, for instance, you completely forgot to turn in piety in Act 3, like I'd forgotten until level 92 on one of my characters recently. So I'd killed piety, obviously, in Act 3. That's a skill point quest, but I just had never gone back and talked to Grigor and got the book. I think what they could do is give the Act bosses a very high chance to drop specifically cultivated lists of uniques that are really useful while leveling. So something like Silver Branch uh, or um, or the like, have those be really likely to drop from certain act bosses. Even Worms Malt is really good when you're leveling. The, the thing you've got to be careful of, if it's something that has endgame demand, uh, you are giving bots easy access to unlimited copies of that item. And that's a real problem. Let's cast my Corrupting Blood Attractor.
There's a number of um, obscure slash commands in this game. Uh, ones that just don't come up all that often, but are useful to know. Uh, trying to think of the others. Uh, they're all they're all kind of niche. Slash passives is the main one. All right, so here's the waypoint for Volenta. Uh, and then we just got to push through this zone. Slash deaths, yeah. Slash played, that's another good example. Uh, that is only a current character. I believe tracking that account wide is a Steam exclusive feature. Oh, feature in inverted commas because uh, it's like telling you how much of your life you've wasted playing the game. So I could do lab three at any time now. Uh, I could have done it before Katava if I wanted, but uh, I'll probably just sit on it for a little bit. I have some stuff to do IRL in a couple of hours time. Uh, I'll need to eat before that. So I'm not gonna be streaming all that much longer. Yeah, see like I, that's, um, I'm not at that point yet. Ask Josh, uh, but like I'm sort of at the point where I, I was burned out at my old job and I had enough savings that I thought I could give it a serious go and I'm still still working on it. We'll see how we go. Um, yeah, I'm not quite making, I'm not quite making a living in uh, yet, but I'm not in any position where, I, where I'm close to admitting failure or anything. Still been growing. Did you know it's dev colon hour? I am trying to place what you mean by that H plan. Oh. Oh God. Yeah, Merc Lab is, like, Merc Lab was amazingly fun the first 10 or 20 times. I am, I am thoroughly sick of it now, but it was amazing early on. Hey, what are you offering me here on this one? Uh, life and regen. I really like this mod because uh, you can craft it in a lot of places. This is Riker's Vale, so it has a unique mod. But I'm not actually sure what I have in Trade League. Yeah, that is true. Lab, lab on hardcore would be um, intense. So Valenda, you want to burst down quickly. Uh, has one, she has one super rippy mechanic that uh, you don't really want to see aimed at you. The colour scheme is just Krangle as well.
Oh, there it is. There's the move that's the killer. The thing that can just um, squish you out of nowhere if you're not if you're not um, ready for it. Uh, what else were we going for in this area again? I've um, gotten the spot that I'm uh, going downwards. That's right, downwards through the crit nodes. And we'll take all of this crit cluster here and then we'll start um like there's just a couple of quality nodes in that area that we will pick up uh then after that i think it's time to start looking into clusters i think we could get an upgrade here i think we just got an upgrade here uh, this is just basically 436, and uh, I don't have the decks yet, but yeah, this is an upgrade. I'll be using that for sure. Uh, so, crit cluster, we'll take crit chance and then um, annihilation next. So, we could do Merclav at this point, and in fact, I think Merclav sounds good. Let's do Merclav. Uh, I will just quickly look up the Piri Lab info for today. Uh, don't feel like doing Lab Blind. Uh, not for Merc. It just takes that a bit longer. And because it's such a clunky site, it tends to run so much extra... Um, tends to uh, drain so much system resources when it's open. I will close that and take a screen cap of it. I need to take a quick AFK at this point, so I'm going to put on one of the stupid Twitch ads and go and do something very quick IRL. Uh, I will be back shortly. Maybe I'll be less than three minutes, but I'll just say three minutes for the moment. And then I shall be back. Hey all, uh, sorry about that. I am just going to check the situation on that um, stupid ad, see if that's finished. Looks like it's not going at the moment. Um, so let us remove this text that says AFK three minutes.
I will say I had a lot of fun back when back when I frequently failed the Merc Lab, uh, which was when it was brand newly added. That was a lot of fun, I thought. Uh, first room has Argus and one exit. Because I have looked up the uh, cheat sheet for this lab. I'm squishy, so I can't tank anything from Azaro. Oh, let's do a let's do one of these. Red, yellow, blue. These um, puzzles are something that you don't often do normally, but I haven't done one in a while. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue. Red. Get through there, and now I can grab the loot from it, which will be rubbish. In fact, it's so rubbish that nothing is visible through the filter at all. Yeah, I think Chieftains will like that a lot, H Plan. Um, so Azaro will one tap on a uh, if I fail his major mechanics. His normal attack won't one one, one tap this hit points. Argus, yeah, Argus I'll probably avoid. I don't have decoy totem to control Argus, so I'd have to outplay him. Uh, it's very easy to make a mistake on him. But Argus is in this room anyway, so not that fast about skipping him. Okay, so two exits to this one and no noticeable uh, rewards in here. Uh, one of the exits, the one that we'll take, is the one to the next room. Yeah, Argus is very easy to underestimate. I died to him too often when he was new. I feel like the first league that the that the lab was added, there was a challenge to kill Argus in Merc Lab, just at all, and then to complete to complete the uh, the lab after killing Argus. And I had so much trouble with that from memory. Now I wasn't very good at the game back then, but still, like that was something that was a learning experience that um, Argus is not to be trifled with lightly. Uh, now that's the incorrect path. That'll be one more exit out of here. It's probably often close by in this tile set. Oh, when I started playing lab didn't exist and then they added Merc lab for a league before they added eternal. But when they added eternal lab, I think eternal lab was as hard when it was added as the harvest labs are now. I think, uh, there's just been a lot of power creep since then. Like a really big a lot, a really big lot of power creeps since then. Uh, a lot of people relied upon um, carry services to beat Eternal Lab back then, like to quad ascend. I know that the first league that the lab was out, I needed a Merc Lab service. Uh, I did eventually get Merc Lab down myself, but it wasn't until after I'd been tri after I'd triple ascended with someone else's help. Harvest Labs are just a cool little side thing that I I'm quite like them. I right, amount of flask isn't too bad damage wise. It is one of those stupid damaging ones that we all hate. But it's anti bleed, so I'm using it. Oh shit! No blast! I didn't see very well then. Uh, crangled there. That was, um, that was just bad. 
I underestimated that trap gauntlet, thought it was just a normal one, and it wasn't. It was one of the really ugly ones. Anyways. Uh, the thing about doing Labyrinth at level uh, is that that sometimes happens. And in fact, no amount of hit points would have helped me there. You need physical damage reduction to survive that. Uh, but it doesn't actually matter that much because you're getting XP from it. So even though you die, um, you still get quite a bit of XP out of lab at level. Obligatory pick this up to chance it into a mage blood. Do I have a chance orb on me? No. Nah. It's getting chanced into a mage blood later. I actually have some regen. I didn't have enough. Not gonna do the uh not gonna do the puzzle again. I'll do the puzzle before last time through. Oh yeah, Mind Over Matter would be nuts, but oh, I was with the Agnostic was nuts for it. Like the amount of regen that that character had was insane. There is more around here. I thought there was more. This would be the path. Dark Shrine for traps makes things a lot easier. This means you don't need to pay any attention anymore. That said, there's no Dark Shrine in this room, so... Or at least, according to POE Lab, there's not. They sometimes get that wrong, but usually they don't. Hmm. Could be down there, too. I don't think so, but it could be. No, nah, that's just the decor chest. Oh, get out of those. Uh... All right, I was a waste of space, that area. Getting the instant kill on the gargoyles, is, oh, I'm not, sorry, the lieutenants is nice, but not really anything special. You'll notice I still haven't done the Scourge quest. That's just because I don't want to uh, rely upon loot acquisition mechanics that won't be available in 3.17 with this test. All right, let's respect the traps this time. That worked. Oh, the weary traveller grows close to the end of the path. Izaro's uh, voiceovers are some of the best things in the game. Come here, Izzy. All right, so he's dying. Wow. Actually, insta popped him. That I did not expect. I did not expect that to be an instant fires. Okay, Dank Shrine in the first room, and there is a single exit in this one. So I'm going to have a quick look for the Dark Shrine, but I'm not going to do any exhaustive searching. I'm just looking for anything that jumps out at me as like. Hey, this looks like a spot where a dark shrine might be hidden. Yeah, yeah. Izaro's quotes, just in general, are fantastic. What's really amazing is he has so much wisdom for someone whose philosophy is that the best person to rule a country is the person that is best at fighting one-on-one. -on -one. Like, that's really all that 
this comes down to. It's a pretty terrible way to determine who should rule rule an empire. Uh, and so it's like it's really funny how that works out, that he's got all this wisdom and then has where when it counts, it comes to uh, running a country well, uh, he's absolutely terrible with his strategy for choosing a new emperor. Oh, I do think that in, in the law he did, uh, there was an element where he did that to prevent dynasties that were terrible, so maybe it was all right in that sense. But the system collapsed, so... Okay, we got the. Yeah, I think everyone remembers their first labyrinth success really fondly, uh, like a, at least for the higher labs. Lower tier labs, you might not realise that they're there until till way too late. That tends to come up a bit. Yeah, exactly. Ends up choosing Parandus, who become a dynasty and terrible rulers. Moral to this story is don't put Confucius in charge of running the country. Confucius say this bad idea. Oh, Acceleration Shrine. This is just like the most fun thing to get in lab. It's like it's pretty strong without being amazing uh, in terms of how much powerful, uh, how much more powerful it makes you, but it's just so fun to zip through at this speed. I always love that Dark Shrine for that reason. And for that matter, just getting it as an Acceleration Shrine in a map is great too. Okay, so this has two exits, uh, top right, nothing else to get in here, just top right and exit, which will be the correct spot for the next trial. We're strong enough to finish Zaro easily now with the with the acceleration shrine. Like that makes it that makes the final Zaro really easy. So this is the trap gauntlet that we were warned about by the um, by POE Lab. Uh, we're not going to do it. So one of the things with move speed and traps in this uh, in the um, lab is that there is a limit to how well they can track you and anticipate anticipate your appearance sometimes so if you can if you zip into a trap room sometimes it doesn't actually matter at all all right took a big chunking there from something not actually sure what it was, but whatever it was that clunked me, uh, it wasn't lethal, but oh, it might have been one of these idiots. Kind of like that. Um, is the reason I can't use that just strength? Uh, sorry, just level? No, it's strength as well. Oh, well. feels like it's worth using. Um, I didn't check my map at this point. Where do we have to go? Top right. This room has a dark shrine, but it's a bad layout for finding it. Uh, so if I find it, I find it. If I don't, I don't. Sometimes they're just at the start like this. Yeah, it's down here. All right, that was worth the look. Uh, Labyrinth traps are turned off as well. That makes the final fight easier. Acceleration Shrine is better, but that is still strong to have. Oh, 
All right, are you the correct way? No, you are not. Where do I need to go instead? Uh, further up and right. And that's more like it. Correct exit. And the exit from this is top right. Uh, sorry, top middle. This is one of these zones. Okay, what else is there in here? Nothing of relevance. Just thinking I should be using steel skin on this character uh, at the moment. It's not like it's ideal, but uh, it's like it's miles worse than Molten, but it's something I can use. I can't support Molten at the moment. Like, there is an element of I kind of don't care because I don't need it. Uh, but, like, there is that attitude, which I always stick with for quite a bit longer than it's useful. Hang on. So that's the downwards path. Uh, it is indeed left and, yeah, like, it's sort of uh, anti-clockwise and probably not far. That'll be it there. Aspirin trial. Come on, Izzy. Squish. I think I only have one, right? Yep. Uh, I really can't be bothered, can I? Nah, I can't be bothered. I'll take Chain Reaction for now. Pyromaniac later because I've got enough uh, life recovery at the moment. Yeah, I'll go Manual Steel Skin for the moment, uh, but keep in mind that I can always change that. Don't even have the red um, slot for it. Oh, well, that's easily fixed. I have plenty of space to make it. In fact, I wanted to use this, didn't I? But I don't, I don't, I'm nowhere near the decks. Okay. Uh, you go red. No, no. Oh, come on. Really? Really? That's more like it. Stupid crangled thing. Bender, I'm going to keep, uh, like, yes, yeah, it's not okay. You got absolutely zero in the way of resist. I don't think, I can't think of any prefixes to craft on you. I'm keeping that to chance into a mage blood. So let's go do that now. Well, there's my, um, evidence that there's no such thing as streamer RNG. And what do we got? Uh, that's... Look, that's a big resist, but I need the cold resist on this as well. I can't, yeah, I can't use that. Don't really want to anyway. Just dump some stuff in this spot. Okay, mapping time. I will just do a few tier ones, and then I think at that point I will probably end up, um, I will probably end up having to call it because I have some other commitments later on this afternoon, my time. Or this evening, my time, which is like in not all that long. Yeah, correct, Tumblr. Correct. Uh, let's do this. Why don't we do the 8 mod? 8 mod with Beyond. That sounds like a good map to do first. Uh, Haunted Mansion, Dungeon, and Stagnation. So this uh, dungeon is Crangled. Uh, so we'll just get it out of the way. 
Actually, map reward. I can take a dungeon from here. And that's the magic dungeon that I need for, for completion. I'm just going to manual cast Steel Skin, that means I'll level it up as much as my strength allows, which will be most of the way. Uh, but not all. Like, I'll probably end up stuck at level 16 or 17 or something like that, uh, which will be fine. If I need to burn 30, a uh, 30 stat point node, I'll do it. Currently, my tentative plan is to take the uh, node that used, the cluster that used to be 35, uh, 35 strength and decks uh, above which the two points that's a tentative plan to take those points but I haven't committed to it yet they give a bunch of resists now as well they give less stats but they give resists yeah traps don't care about reflect that is correct annoying beef so I have to find a Cassier encounter and find the relevant oils before I can anoint beef. That is an option though. Very cheap anoint. And it makes you beefy. Why am I getting augments? I don't think I need them. I don't think I'm ever going to need them. Anyways. Is this the boss? No, it's not the boss. The Warden is interesting. It's pretty terrible usually, uh, but it's still actually good enough to be worth using very early on in a league. Uh, it's one of the things I like with Dungeon being a tier one. Uh, the Warden Divination card is common and it is genuinely quite okay if you get an I-80 um, amulet with... If it, if it gets five mods on it, it can easily be usable. Oh, what's my phone beeping at me for? Um... I don't know, why is it vaping at me? Someone's doing something that's getting my attention there. Blast. Oh. Just an email from Google. Really didn't need a notification out loud for that. One thing I'd like to see done is an overhaul of map mods. Uh, that'd be something to be cool if it's in 317. Uh, I am fine with nasty map mods existing. I just think that some things are, pu are punished that maybe don't need to be. Some things aren't that are. Like, why is there no map mod that's, that is harsh on crit? Like, you know, a map mod that's like, um, player chance to crit is unlucky, or player chance to crit, the players have 50% less chance to crit. You know, something like that that's genuinely mean, but doesn't, uh, isn't as mean as Reflect is. We have that for defences, we just don't have it for uh, offensive things like crit. IRL notification loot filters, that's a great idea. There is reduced extra damage from crits. But that's, like, the numbers on it are low enough that they're not, like, that it doesn't, um, seriously, it doesn't change the way you play. It's functionally, it's no different to just monsters have 35% more life or something like that. Well, I'm quite happy with that. I think that was a uh, perfectly fine performance for, a, for um, gear that's still very much early tier. Uh, what are we using here? That's the 42 cold damage to spells. A fair chunk of spell damage. Like this is not, this one is not rubbish, but it is not what I would term good. I'm not dual wielding wands and I'm, I'm content with that damage output against a tier one bite boss, especially when I wasn't expecting twin either. This is a map that has twinned and one other mod on it. So I'm not sure what that other mod would have been.
Let's check a tier one breach. Again, only a magic mod uh, map, but uh, it does have a, an unknown live mod. Can I get around there? I can. All right, got to say, performance is feeling fine here. I have no concerns about performance currently on this character. Uh, at present, I am not using Pierce on it. Uh, I am considering Voidwalker as an option, though, if I do feel like I need Pierce later. Uh, it does not... Things do not inherently have Pierce... Like, Lightning Traps don't inherently pierce, uh, so you you may want it for, for really dense content, and obviously you're going to want that you're going to want to be doing dense content. Uh, Void Walker is on my list of items to check out. Replica Void Walker, if you want to go glass cannon, uh, but that is a pretty gutsy item to use with the ten percent increased damage taken. There's a few other options too. You can there's an anointment that gives uh, two additional pierces from memory. I have to check confirm that, but I think there's an anoint for two pierces. I am actually near it, aren't I? That's a good point. I am near it. I'm I'm thinking of it in terms of as an anoint, but um, I am actually near it. I could just take it, and there's a small node near it for plus one as well. So yeah, lots of choices there. Hunter Boots, yep, that's another option. Uh, that's plus one, two, or five, depending on the tier that you get it from memory. So, yeah, there's a lot of choices for, uh, for Pierce. Uh, that's enough of this map. All right, let's do the eight mod. Uh, so we have this eight mod from where I crangled a... Um, I vialed a cutter box leveling. Yeah, it's hard to get that mod and move speed together. So this is going to be super rippy, obviously. Um, I would be really cautious. Exile, scary exile too. Kill it quickly. Get rid of that. Here I'm paying for not having Pyromaniac. Like for choosing to take the other nodes first. That exile is uh, making me flow. I didn't actually kill it, did I? No. Did now. Or did I? Are there two of the same exile near each other? Oh no, it's just a lingering after effect from his from when he was alive. Hey, five link. If this was league start, that would have been a reasonable drop. Well, not really. I'm too far behind the time for um, for that to matter at league start. I knew Grandmaster, did they? Oh, nice.
what type of OP was it? Like, um, unkillable or just ridiculously, uh, ridiculous burst damage or something else? The troll in me wants to get a um, petition started on. Oh well, like this is this is just a troll Reddit, but start some sort of petition to un called unnerf Hogum, and just saying please put it back on the atlas. It's been it's been useless since it got nerfed. Uh, there we go, splat. Oh nice, that's um that's savage. So I am outmatched on this uh, on this map. I sort of thought I might be, but eh, I'll get through it. I'm gonna complete it fine. Uh, but Deathless isn't happening. I think this is one of those spots where my lack of pierce is actually hurting me, uh, because the rest of the time it wasn't hurting me, not having pierce, but here it is. I need my little minion up. The Maven belts are, are all three of them are genuinely good. They're just like it's just a hard spot to slot to compete with. Ah, Hast is um, Hasta la vista, nearly. I was close to it. Anyways, uh, let's go grab this big. This is a big node, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of crit on that. Crit, more crit chance actually matters here than, uh, oh, sorry. Crit chance matters more than the crit multi probably at the moment. Just means I'm more likely to get things frozen. Yeah, squish. That splat. Undetermined stuff it. I'm going to kill this Haas no matter what. Am I under capped on cold resist? No, I'm not. No, I'm actually capped. Anyways, we'll get him down. Moral to this story is don't do eight mod maps when you're not ready for it, or do because it's fun. And like trying to get past a Haas like this is actually more fun than just beating Haas easily. Main thing I'm missing though is uh, some sort of resilience against freeze. Once I get frozen, I'm in real trouble. Ooh. Took so much damage from off screen then. I didn't see that coming at all. Full life back, please. <laughs> Alex with this savage and like oh, uh, hardcore is gonna be nuts, hey. Like there's one thing about the Beyond bosses. You can easily outgear them, but until you do, they are terrifying. Ah squish. I misplayed that. I went in too aggressive. They are absolutely terrifying when you um when you don't outgear them yet. All right, that's better. Just got the uh, got the traps off on him and then stayed alive. I didn't get frozen. Didn't uh, walk into his freezers.
Then you hit a point where an encounter like that just stops being fun because you just kill it straight away. Like, that's going to be a high point of this stream from a fun perspective. Just dying, was it three times to the same hast? There's a Bammoth. Get off the bad crap on the ground. He's still there. He's not anymore. Alright. Well, now let's go deal with the Estuary boss. You should probably, when you're doing this, um, these eight mod maps for the first time, I think you want, like, 4,500 health for them. So, you know, 2,800 is, uh, is silly, but fun. It's mostly that you get hit by a lot more ailments with low, with low, um, life like this. So things that you can face tank in an, in the normal game, you can, well, in normal play, you can't. All right, there we go. That's better. Oh, we got here. This is uh, Nomics, isn't it? I rubbish. Storm Charger, that's right. Lightning ailments uh, effect is quite good, but nah. You know I'm using something terrible. That's probably an upgrade. I'm not getting three blues on it. Yeah, Bamath is um, Bamath is brutal for for that. Oh, Midnight Bargain. That's one of the rarer items around that um, aren't very popular. Oh, well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just going to dump this in here, even though, like, I'm not intending to sell them. They're listed in, well, I'm in SSF at the moment anyway, but all right, they'll just sit there for the moment. That's an upgrade over the baseline flask. Upgrade over baseline flask. We'll take that. And let us run the other two tier ones. So we have a haunted mansion and we have a stagnation. We need to roll them both. Haunted mansion. Ellie reflect. Oh, guess what? Who cares? As long as I don't gank myself with my vile spark. Um... And this is not the, this is not even reflect. H plan has figured out his planned league starter. And it needs a stasis prison. That sounds like a good plan to me. So this is not the map that it has the alley reflect on it, so I can fire off Vile Spark like that. Uh, this map is terrible, this tile set. I've really gotten to hate it during this league. So I'm just going to push to the boss. If I find the boss, that's enough for this tile set. The adjacent tier 2s I will get to uh, on the next stream probably by running um by other means like by yeah turning in three of the um three stagnations for one stuff like that hopefully i get one of them here Someone posted an amazing video of them far uh, solo farming the uh, unrelenting domain of timeless conflict. Uh, it was, I think it was on POE builds. Uh, the video was by someone who's clearly like a Chinese is their first language, but like they said, uh, so they 
they play in Chinese, but they have decent enough English. And so they'd like made it, I think, for a for a Chinese expat audience in or or maybe just maybe it is for the Chinese audience, I don't know. But uh yeah, it looks like it's something that has a lot of potential. It's a kinetic blast character. It seems like it should work pretty well on a lower budget than this player has too. It's not a budget modern, but it's fine. Uh, advice for that, Jose, is going to be to farm the Awakener Orb, definitely. Uh, Awakener Orb will be one of the easier ones to get. What else are you missing? As three more Scourge passives is a lot. So I would just I would just run Cirrus Cycles to start with. I hate some of the mechanics of this fight. Like, it's so unclear where he's targeting with that. And Haunted Mansion. But yeah, th uh, three, the Scourge passives one... I, to most people, I recommend that that would be your 39th challenge uh, because it's a huge grind. So, like, you'll probably be able to find something else you can do easier. If you're in trade enabled, I would just trade for the Awakener Orb and then I would... Um... Oh, yikes. I'm taking so much damage. I didn't fire off my thing. Get him to commit to a move. Oh, he's dead anyway. And that's the common Jade Amulet, yeah. I'm surprised you haven't had one Sacred Orb if you've uh, if you farmed that much. Like, I haven't got as close... Oh. They're getting killed there by... I'm not sure. Uh, Endgame Grinds is probably, like, it's... Endgame Grinds is, um... Oh. Not paying enough attention. Ah, oh, I know why I killed myself. Frost Blink. <laughs> That's funny, I didn't realise it's, um, it's sexually reflect. That's what I was killing myself with. Now I've learned it. It's, um, it's not just the Vile Spark, it's the Frost Blink. And that's a big drawback to Frostblink and something that will probably result in me using, uh, me changing my move skill. Yeah, it does enough damage to do it. That's the thing that's crazy with the skill. Like, it does enough damage to inflict serious chills, which is why it's a good skill. But that does have a serious drawback. At least if you're Reflect Immune in general. It is a useful thing to learn there, though. Like, these are the sorts of things that I want to... If I do end up making... Recommending this as, uh, and putting together a guide for it, these are some of the things that I will want to definitely mention. Like, the, the mistakes that you make are the things people learn the most from.
Because I kind of expect that uh, that we'll see a minor nerf to Flame Dash again. It's it is the it is the best of the move skills and it has been for a long time. I will look at uh, your questions in a sec. Sorry, I'm just going to fight this thing without uh, derping and using my Vile Spark like I normally would. I think that Frostblink is in a very healthy uh, spot power-wise. I think... Uh, oh, squish. So the reason I died there was a poison on me that I couldn't outrage in. Uh, if in doubt, I think take um, Shaper of Storms for there. And Shaper of Storms is much better than it feels. Hey, Captain. Uh, unfortunately, you've caught me right at the end of today's stream. I am going to be heading off in the next, like, 10 minutes or so. I just wanted to get all the tier one maps done before calling it. I had a bad poison on me again. Oof. I don't have any way of mitigating that. Everything is poisoning and we're taking a lot of damage there. Anyways, that's all right. We'll just have to throw a couple of big traps in, hide around the corner. Okay. Hey, Jose, thank you for the follow. Jose, sure. I just find, um, like, the idea of watching streams on phone is something, like, I've tried it a couple of times and it just does not work for me at all. Hey, thanks for the prime sub as well. I'd say go grab yourself a beer, but you've just gotten me one. Ah, I'm, I'm crangled. Double poison, ouch, burn. Oh, lots of fails. That's always fun. Like, you want, you want it to be warts and all gameplay for a VOD. Uh, it's like, it's, it's no use if it's the polished stuff where you, you hide all of the mistakes you make. I figure that anyone that's capable of playing a build perfectly, uh, is going to, like, would not be following a build guide. They'd be making their own. Oh, yikes, squish, splat, boom. Anyways, I am like I'm undergeared for doing um, for doing just Elk and Go maps, sixty eight and mostly in gear that I was using in Act Seven. I'm fine with this performance. Plus, Expedition is really rippy content. So, like, it's not something that is a problem to be dying in. It's something that if you're in hardcore, you wouldn't be attempting at this point in progress. You'd, you'd uh, gear up a bit first. Uh, defensive War is to be determined. At the moment, I am using none. That's why I'm so glass cannon right now. Like, Determination's the best, but I'm just going to work under the assumption Determination in its current form won't survive 317. 
Uh, if it does, then obviously you use determination. Nothing else is worth considering. But uh, I think there'll be somewhat of a shake up there, so I'm not willing to really make any serious plans. See how far I can get without any of them, basically. Also, mana is real tight. So I may need um, more investment. Uh, 5,000 is playing it super safe. Like, that's spending a lot of time to get to that point. A lot, lot, lot of time in um, Acts 9 and 10. Probably Act 9. Like, it does come down to a point of, are you getting a payoff for all that time you're investing in the safety? Anyways, folks, I think at this point is probably going to be a good time to call it. So we've done all the tier one maps at this point, and it's going to be time to start focusing on uh, on getting from just early, like initial Atlas progression up to pushing for eight Watchstones probably in the next stream I do. Uh, I think that'll be the plan. Hey, um, Frog Frontier, thanks for the follow. Uh, so that's going to be the next sort of plan that we'll go with. During that stream, we'll have to fix up defences, because currently defences are terrible, as you can see. Uh, but I'm still pretty happy with how this is going at the moment. I'm thinking that as I log off, let's go and raid... Um, let's go raid Shaq. Oh, sorry, Nettle, if, you're, uh, if you've just... Uh, thanks for the follow, Cherry. Sorry if you've just uh, tuned in at the wrong time. If you're interested in seeing the Act 1 to 7 progression of this, uh, then... Oh! Thanks for the Prime sub as well. Um, I will just link the uh, YouTube VOD of it, which is not currently in public mode, but is viewable. Uh, and then I'll be posting that public in the, in the short term. So that's the VOD for A1 to A7. And so that's just sort of sitting there at the moment. I'll download this one, uh, process it and upload it in tonight. And then it will be there probably now plus maybe 27 hours or so. Um, but that'll be something that will be available at that point. Otherwise, though, let's go, um, let's go say hello to Shack Central. Uh, Shack Central is an expert in the cold dot builds. Uh, he maintains the best forum guide for, uh, for the archetype. Uh, he's also a pretty just generally knowledgeable guy and good, good player too. So I do like um, watching him quite a bit, except I'm going to have to duck out because I need to get um, something to eat real soon. Welcome in, everybody. 